Here's one of the easiest ways to improve athletic performance, cognitive ability, reduce inflammation, and just feel better. Aim for one gallon of water every single day. Now, I know that's tough, so a lot of you start slow, but if you make one gallon the target, even if you miss it by a little bit, you're probably gonna notice some beneficial effects. This is old bodybuilding wisdom, but it's true. Most people notice benefits when they aim for that much water. You know, there's been a lot of uh, back and forth on this that I've seen of like, uh, this is an area where there, there seems to be a lot of disagreement um, on how much water exactly do you need. And the difference between what you need and probably what's optimal, I think, is, is, is a wide yes. range. Yes. Um, Andrew Huberman just did a post recently where, I, and I think he was referencing multiple studies, not just one study, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it seems as that you know, eight ounces for every hour for the first 10 hours you're awake. And is, then four ounces afterwards every hour. So yeah, that's a that's a lot. Yeah, eighty yeah. ounces is uh, that's more than half of a gallon, right? Mm -hmm. Gallons one hundred twenty, <clears throat> I think was one hundred twenty three or one hundred twenty. Yeah, ounces. and anybody that I've ever told to target like a gallon and start tracking that wasn't before <clears throat> um, was under a gallon. Mm -hmm. Rarely ever or half gallon, excuse me, or that we're even hitting a half gallon. So I think this is actually something that most people do not uh, drink an, enough water and would see huge benefit from that. I actually credit Justin years ago when he was er, an early trainer with me. I, I remember uh, somebody was complaining about their energy levels and I actually heard him uh, speak to water first. And I thought mm -hmm. that was the first time I'd heard somebody, uh, you know, someone's complaining about low energy and him and, and saying like, you know, maybe you're not hydrated enough. And didn't realize it. And that's one of the first go-to places now that, I mean, forever. It's been a long time since uh, that that first time I heard Justin say that to a client that I'll ask somebody. And more often than not, uh, people are grossly under-consuming mm -hmm. water. And just fixing that uh, fixed some of the, the headaches and the energy and just- uh, Cravings. Yeah, yeah, cravings. Like so- Well, unless you're intentional about it, it you completely fall under what you probably should be consuming. And it's just- one of those things like it's it, so the bodybuilder, the the old, you know, trying to like at least um, seek out a gallon. I think that's the, the whole point is that you're intentionally trying to incorporate that uh, throughout your day, because mm -hmm. when you're not hydrated, you feel the effects of not being hydrated. I And and two, I know there's like a threshold in terms of like too much and being overhydrated, but it, I feel like that's a little harder to achieve than versus the other. Bro, approach. that's not a little hard. It's almost impossible. <laughs> My try. entire life, really, yeah, 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 to, okay, I have never met it. somebody who overconsumed water. No, you have to try. You'd have yeah. to, you'd make yourself sick. You'd really yeah, you, you know where, where I've heard of it? I've never seen it firsthand, but where I've heard of it is when you see those competitions. Mm -hmm. When people do those weird competitions of- Well, you there was know, that one famous one, right? It was a radio station. Like, yeah, yeah, the they, they drown yeah, because no. they drank water too fast and, and you know, and they didn't have any like a balance of electrolytes. Yeah. And it, their cells literally drown is what happened. Yeah. No, you're not going to do this by, by aiming for a gallon. And what I noticed with clients when I would have them aim for this is they would lose weight. Now it wasn't because of the fat burning properties of water, but it prevented them from drinking calorie containing fluids. So they would, they would drink less juices and sodas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They moved more because they felt better. They had more energy. They probably got up to pee more. That would be another one right there. Uh, reduced inflammation. That was the first thing people noticed is they would, the next day they'd come back because you'll notice this right away with water. Mm -hmm. If you hit this or you're aiming for this and it's more than you're, than you're used to, the day after or even within hours, you notice you're just, you're just, everything feels yeah, better. Ligaments, tendons are dry. Yep. Like, yeah, you feel that, that yeah. difference of pain. Within the first week, you notice better skin better bowel movements. A lot of people who, who deal with uh, occasional constipation, it has to do with water. Like one of the first things, if you if you have issues with uh, having regular bowel movement and you, you just drink more water, that'll solve it for like half the people uh, who have those types of issues. They're just not drinking enough water. So it makes a huge difference. And then for athletic performance, the, the literature is super crystal clear um, on this and cognitive performance. Now you said something, Adam, mm -hmm. it's important to know. <clears throat> There's the amount that you need, and then there's an optimal amount. So we can get away with a lot less than we're talking about, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this is where people screw up, yeah. is they are like, well, I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I'm drinking you know, when I'm thirsty or whatever. I it, feel like this is one of those, yeah. uh, this, ha this got popular because it was like an assault on the bros. 
you know, which I remember this whole show, I've always tried to like defend the bros because yeah. it's like, man, there's, there's some stuff, man, yeah. that we give, we give bodybuilder community and the bros so much shit about because they, they do a terrible job of communicating the, the science mm -hmm. yeah. per se. The reason and the why. But there's some old wisdom that is behind it. That's yeah. been passed down for generation to generation that has proven to be valuable. And that's why it's stayed around that community for so long. And then here comes this, this new wave of science dorks that want to just shit on that and then talk shit about somebody. And so we just completely throw out that wisdom because, oh, that doesn't line up with this current meta analysis well, that we have. And it's like, yeah. bro, it's not that, not that simple. They, yes, they didn't explain it very well. Okay. Granted. But they didn't explain the why, but they knew that it worked. So here's what bodybuilders do. They'll do something. It works. Lots of them will do it. Everybody notices it works. They pass on the formula. And then they'll go back and try to explain it. And that's usually where they screw up. Yeah. So yeah. then they'll say something like, uh, you know, flush fat out of your body with lots of water. You'll hear stuff like that, right? Bro, we see this. We see right. this from them in... Uh the science of isometrics. We see it with water. We see it with fasted cardio. We see it with uh, carb cycling. Protein window. Yeah, yeah. anabolic. I mean, anabolic there's a lot window. of things that I just listed off that have and, va value. Yes, and what the scientific community does that annoys me is rather than saying, does it work, is they say, oh, the, the mechanisms that you're saying is wrong, and then they throw everything out. I'll give you a great example. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's got to have been now 17, 18 years ago when I first owned my my wellness studio. So it's gotta be at least 17, 18 years ago. I had somebody in there that would that was a wellness specialist and she did gut testing, hormone testing, the whole deal. And she would talk about adrenal fatigue, okay? And the symptoms of adrenal fatigue were excessive fatigue, hot, cold intolerance, um, brittle hair and nails and skin that was off and just all these symptoms of just feeling like just general crap. And the wellness community labeled it adrenal fatigue because they said, oh, it's your adrenals that are fatigued. Now, the scientific community came out and said, that's not what's happening. You're not fatiguing the adrenals. Well, lo and behold, 15 years later, those same symptoms are connected to something called HPA axis dysfunction, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal dysfunction. And, and so they don't call it fatigue. They labeled it something else. They also did this with leaky gut syndrome. Yeah. Leaky gut syndrome. I mean, is that just isn't, semantics at this point? Yeah, the gut's not leaking. And then they come out and they say, oh, actually, it's called uh, intestinal wall hyperpermeability, which is the same thing. So so bodybuilders are like, this works. Then they go to try and explain the mechanisms of why it made them leaner, why it made them well, it's just like And the, they're wrong about the, the mechanisms. Carb, the carb cycling, talking yeah. about insulin levels and trying to to try and tie that. And that's yeah. where they or went deplete, wrong. And everywhere your body has to burn yeah. body fat. Yeah, so I mean, there's, there's a lot of really good, valuable tips that I think we've gotten away from because somebody's come along and disproved the the way they explain it. And so then the, you know, the weekend warrior or general pop person that's trying to get involved in health and fitness don't know what to believe because it's like, oh, I, I, I heard that this used to be true, yeah. but then I follow this really smart, you know, fitness science guy who said that this that's all false and not true. And so then you totally dismiss that valuable piece of information. And I feel like the gallon of water and teasing the bodybuilder for being that guy who carried that around all the time. Okay, if you ask them for the reasons why, they probably don't explain it the best. But hey, in my experience, with my clients, I've had tremendous success making them care. And it doesn't just have to do be that. a gallon. It could be one of these that's like, yeah, just you know, track it. Yeah, you know, a third of a gallon, and then you do three of those in a day. Okay, fine. I find, I find what, what's much harder is somebody who drinks out a little eight ounces glasses and add those all up and tell me you you you're hitting a gallon. Like, no, it's easier to look at something and mm -hmm. yeah. I used to make my clients that buy. Line. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. I would have them buy like a quarter gallon jug and then okay, four of these a day or three of these a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then tracking it. it. By the way, this is pure anecdote, but on average. When I would get a client to do this and nothing else, so they'd come in and, and then I'd say, okay, this is what we're going to start with. We're not going to do anything else. Just do this. On average, they would lose about two to four pounds just from doing this. Well, long. you know that a lot if dehydration- Two to four pounds. Dehydration will trigger hunger too. That's right. Mm -hmm. So there's times where uh, you get a client to do this and yeah, the thing- Increases they, your craving. That's right. They were they were struggling with you know cravings and hunger issues all the time. And you, you've, t you've taught them now to be drinking more water and all of a sudden they don't have that anymore. Like right. that's massive. Now, one thing I'll add, this is important for people who are athletes. So you sweat a lot on a daily basis or you work outside in the hot sun- um, you eat a, 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 a diet that is not, that has no heavily processed food. So it's whole natural foods 
or you eat a very low carbohydrate diet. So let's say less than 70 grams a day, like really low carbs. Those three categories of people, you probably want to add electrolytes to your water. You want to add sodium because mm -hmm. you can take, drink a lot of water, but if your sodium is off, you still may notice effects of what seem like dehydration. And then drinking more water doesn't solve it. So you still may get things like muscle cramps and headaches and things like that. So if you eat a low carb diet or you eat a whole natural food <clears> diet, <throat> so you don't need any heavy, heavily processed, heavily processed foods have a lot of sodium. Whole natural foods have almost no sodium. You have to add it. And even when you add it, it's still low sodium. And then if you sweat a lot, you want to add some electrolytes to your water. We work with LMNT. I love them because there's no calories and it's got a good amount of sodium. Most electrolyte powders are like- Tastes good too. Yeah. Most electrolyte powders are like, they sprinkle sodium in because everybody's afraid of sodium. Mm -hmm. uh, but lmnt has got a thousand milligrams in a packet and you throw that in there. And, and Are you, you do two packets. I do two to three a day. So I try, so I try and get three, I try and drink three of these and one of them, the one that's around my workout, I put the lmnt. Yeah, in. I'll do two around my workout. One before and then one during um, and I just get the best. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When I did go through a carnivore diet, I wasn't doing that. And then like I, I had gone through a, uh, a week or two where I was actually like reintroducing it. And then this time I added in like element T and added in, you mm -hmm. know, electrolytes, massive difference in my performance, uh, lifting weights. Yeah, I know. Which is stupid. It's like obvious, but like, I wouldn't even thought of that as like that intracellular fluid is really, you know, big contributor to performance. Oh yeah. People think it's the, the low carb that's causing it. Like the keto flu that people talk about, Oh, yeah. you go on a keto diet, you know, you drop your cut, your carbs, you're going to feel like shit for, whatever, and you get headaches and it's just withdrawal. It's like- Just lost a lot of sodium. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, because because when you eat low carb, you lose a lot of water and you lose a lot of sodium. So I'd be like, oh, well, here, try this. Let's add a bunch of salt to your diet. And you'll notice right away if that's the issue. If that was the issue, yeah. within an hour or two, you'll be like, oh my God, I feel way better. Substantially right away. better. So yeah, if, if that's you, then I would add some electrolytes to your water. Otherwise, for most people, average person, I wouldn't do this because they probably got plenty of sodium through their, you know, their heavily processed right, food okay. diet. What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway, MAPS Performance. This is the athletic training program. Here's how you could win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this video. Uh, also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all those things and we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, we put together a new workout program bundle called the Time Crunch Bundle. It includes MAPS 15 Minutes, MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Prime, and Eat for Performance eBook. All put together in this bundle discounted over $200 off. So you get all of that for only $99.99. If you're interested or you just want to learn more, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. So I got something for you guys. Um, and this is not alien related, but it is paranormal related. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. So hold on to your seats a little bit, but have you ever heard of the, the hell house? This is in Michigan. So this is a uh, so. a well studied phenomena, uh, and probably some of the best actual evidence of a poltergeist that they've ever had. And and reason being, like, because they've actually had NASA scientists, they've had like legit scientific studied um, uh, the the latest and greatest kind of. Uh, um, type of research, uh, uh, equipment and things to go in there and kind of investigate this. So I originally like, so poltergeist is a spirit that moves things and can possess people, right? Yes. And, okay. and so mainly it's that it's known for, yeah, moving things around, like, like violently, like this is stuff that's like obvious. Like it's like, you know, you see something move and like slam or break or, and so, um, these people like moved into this house and um, what they noticed was a window just smash and broke. And, this, and then it just randomly happened. And then they kept calling the cops like, hey, there's like a somebody around our house lurking and, and um, you know, like come out and check this out and see if and they couldn't find anybody. Right. And then it wasn't just one occurrence. It was like every single night they were calling the cops and making these reports about these really loud knocks. Um, and it was like the neighbors heard it all and they all heard this knocking on the house and it was like getting louder and louder and more aggressive to the point where like later on it, it actually had phenomena where, um, there was like just random fire would, would burst, uh, it, on one of the guys that was in the bathroom, like there was just this flames that came out of nowhere and like burned. I've seen you do that before in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, that's after that's a nice bowl of chili, but you know, <laughs> stupid. I've seen this. That's not a poltergeist, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> dude. But the, I mean, so the fire department came out, they all investigated, and in their report, they're like, this is not man made by any means like this wasn't an arson an arsonist there's no way like this this came from any source that we can think of from electrical source like anything they couldn't explain so, it so scientists have come in there it's, so it's a famous place where they've come in and tried to study and figure right. it out and they can't figure out what the hell's going on so yeah and so they just chalk it up as like a paranormal event uh and this is just how it sits did the people it, move or did they stay in there this whole time so yeah so they moved but they're tormented. These two brothers, like their parents died off, but uh, they're older now. And like the, this documentary that I was watching, like they came back and this guy was investigating this house with like a medium and they're kind of going through it and all this. And then they actually bring the brothers in there to like relive all this stuff. And I was like, dude, that's so messed up. Them? So is it is it is the house uh, abandoned? Or is there someone that lives there? So th there's people that live there now, which is a trip, like these two ladies. And they've only noticed... Uh, it, the occurrences haven't really happened for them. So it, they've noticed like some um, vision of somebody in the window, like outside. And they were like, thought that was weird. Uh, I'm but, out of there. I'd be yeah, out of there. Bro. Yeah, dude. So well, what, here's, okay. So the backstory on them. It, so I guess down the street at this other house, there was a witch and she basically did this whole like ceremony and thing to like open up this like, crazy portal, whatever, like some, some demon they unleashed somehow. Right. And, and so this guy that was one of the brothers, like she came over to the house. Originally she wanted to buy the house from them because like, I guess the, the thought process with this was like, they, she, they could have this house and they could do all of their ceremonies there. So they didn't have the spirits like at their house. Mm. Uh, and so they were trying to go over and like, and buy the house off of them. And they're like, no, no, we, we're not going to sell the house. Like we're not interested. And she came over and, and basically like one of the brothers like was talking to him and was like, come with me and like lured him over to their house. And she just like gave him something to drink. And so like, obviously probably drugged him and did this whole like ritual around him was like walking around him, spinning, like cut his hair, ate part of his hair. What? And then like, How so do they know this is this, what happened. This guy like claims, well, he was just reliving it and he was like like going through all this again like talking about what happened like he didn't even remember any of it but like going back to that house he started to kind of relive it oh god and so <laughs> it's dude and so so what they think is like he might have been possessed where and he brought that over to the house do you, do you, with him do you watch this alone or you watch this with your i was watching with it with courtney yeah did you have you still not watched the unsolved mysteries he, you got to no. so now the reason why you're, I'm bringing it up now is because there's an episode on a poltergeist, and it's a crazy one because it's a, I can't remember what city this house is in, but this poor single mother and her daughter move into this house, and within 30 days, like there was like 15 like occurrences of like shit being moved, a talking doll, a doll that has like that talks yeah. that she fucking ripped the battery out of, and it still, it still was to, oh bro, like all kinds of and the Ugh. daughter talking to the to the ghost and having a name. This gets crazy. Yeah. The the daughter having a conversation. Her mom walking down the hall. Daughter's having a conversation to something that looks like nothing in the room. Her giving the name, total weird name. Who are you talking to? She says her name. Yeah. Fast forward That's into the wild. show. <laughs> They, they, she freaks out. She has so many occurrences, and within 30 days, she moves the fuck out. She gets yeah. out. And when she's, like, freaking out and leaving, the neighbor goes, like, nobody ever li lives there longer than a couple months. This house is always... <laughs> and then they find out that 50 years ago that there was a girl that was kidnapped and never found from that from the house. Yeah. And her name wow. is the name of the fucking girl. Ah, the girl saying, dude, come on. Yeah, right? Come and on. That now. got me, dude. Get me out of there, bro. You need to, it's all on. That's the that's in the new that new season. So you got yeah, to watch the, the Bigfoot you know, one. I, I can't one. wait because there was like a Bigfoot one. Yeah, too, you'll love the I'm Bigfoot like, one for sure. You know me and Squatch. Yeah. yeah. And, so, <laughs> and then... <laughs> You'll yeah. definitely like that one too, though, because that one had me tripping out because there was a lot of stuff that was like, dude, that's too much. Dude. I, yeah, I'd yeah. be out of there, dude. It's you know, do you guys know that the that the Catholic Church still perform? They have a protocol, yeah, for mm -hmm. exorcisms. For exorcisms. Mm -hmm. You know that mm -hmm. they actually have a they have like a criteria. So they have they'll have an event that'll happen. Someone's possessed or whatever, and they'll send doctors and scientists. This is what I know of it. Okay, so I don't know the exact protocol, but 
They'll send doctors and scientists. It's confirmed it's not mental illness. It's confirmed that they have signs of possession or whatever. And if it meets the stringent criteria, and they're very hush-hush about it, apparently, they'll send a person over there, a priest or whatever, to do this exorcism. Yeah. But today, they still today well, they, they still They did that to this house, too. They, and, and the priest didn't want anything to do with this house. It was like <laughs> stepped in and was like, I'm out. Like, <laughs> he didn't even want to do the yeah, ceremony. Bro. Yeah. Hey, dude, what, what one of the, the one of the knives in the kitchen and like, he's like, Hell lifted no. up and, and it, it, it threw itself right past this guy's head. Yeah. Into the wall behind him. Hey, 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 Doug, hey. Google, Google this for me. How many uh, exorcism happen per year? I'm just curious. Like how, how, hey, how, how, yeah. like, like, how fucked would you be if you're like, you finally, like, you know what? I finally found oh, Catholic Church. They're going to save us. They send a pre. He walks in. He's like, nah, like this nah. is unsavable. Oh, like, oh, like he walks in. He goes, hell no. Nah. Uh, yeah, bro, come on, man. What are we going to do? Yeah. Ghostbusters aren't people, real. People, I'm like, why? Like, at this point, all of this occurrences happen, like, Think about they're not getting any sleep. Like it happens always in the middle of the night, you know, and like just torments them. Like leave. Like at this point, like what are you doing anymore? Like they're oh. they're trying to fight it. Like you're, <laughs> you're not gonna win the fight. Yeah, a spirit. Yeah. Have you heard stories? I've heard stories too where people do move, and the, and the spirits follow them. Have you heard of these stories? Yeah. Well, they'll yeah. move into another house yeah. and it's there. Yeah. Oh my god, that's gotta bro. be the worst. I'd be yeah. so yeah. mad. Yeah, like, that, what do I do? That would, yeah. that to would, get out that, of that get out of it. That's scary. You know, I have something really embarrassing to admit. Um, since we're talking about shows, uh oh. So mm. <laughs> this is like super yes. embarrassing. So uh, last night I'm on. Uh, and what's embarrassing is that I have to admit that it took three episodes before I like put piece this together. Oh. So and and you know that's like three hours. I'm I'm, I'm going to blame it on Netflix. For it said ninety eight percent match. That's pretty good. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like ninety eight percent match to what you like based off of your algorithm. I should like this. But we right? have like rental properties. I've noticed that it's been yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, algorithm yeah. way off. Yeah, I do. Yeah, You're, yeah. This is true. We do have our Netflix on on a bunch of different properties where random people are probably using it. So so it gets it gets uh you know sent to me now. What got me was it starts off, and it's this girl. Okay, the show's called Sex Life. Okay, so. So title, sorry, got in. you sucked in. Right, right. So I'm <laughs> curious, interested, yeah, right? Curious. And and it starts off and you know, sex scene pretty much out the gates as you would anticipate. And the girl though is like in is like you, where she's having the conversation in her head. So mm. I think because that was so recent and I liked you so much that I was like, I told Katrina, I was like, oh, we should watch this. This is cool. She's having like this inner dialogue, you know, and it's and then I'm like three episodes in and I and I finally say something, I'm like Oh my God! You know what we're watching? We're literally watching a romance novel mm -hmm. that's done in a, in a Netflix series because it's literally terrible plot <laughs> with just you know there's there's you know either dicks, tits, or fucking every three to five minutes yeah. with like little plot to to break it all up. Right. And because it, I mean, because it's they like, use words like engorged, <laughs> and, uh, no throbbing. You know what? And, yeah. What made Unsheathed. me finally why, why it took three <laughs> three episodes? Well, first of all, like. Obviously, sex and all those things are, uh, you know, uh, you know, like candy to the brain, right? I'm going like, okay, so like, oh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll wait it out. yeah, I'll wait it out. Yeah. Like not realizing let's, I'm let's watching really bad it. acting, and there's like not a really good deep plot going on here, you know. And, I, and I'm justifying it. Oh, let's go to the next episode and watch you another one. And then I realize like the most like basic scenes. There's like no reason to show the dude's dick, and they do, or there's <laughs> no show, or no reason to wait, show, they show full frontal nudity. Yeah, yeah, this is on Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was told about it yesterday. And uh, I haven't checked it out. Don't. And I don't intend you to. You don't need to. You know, it, it's literally a romance novel. You know, they used to never show full, like, frontal nudity. It used to be like, it was had to be rated X for something. Yeah. Now they're showing on Netflix? Yeah, oh yeah, dick, there's, there's boobs. And, it's, and it, that, that, what made me realize it, it took a multiple scenes. I'm like, was that necessary? Like, did, <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I need to see her naked to get that 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 part? You know, and then I realized, oh, there is no emphasis on this plot whatsoever. He's, he's outside it's literally like porno. It's just designed to bridge me to the next sex scene. I mean, it literally reminded me of like Cinemax like when you were Skinamax, a kid. Skinamax, yeah. yeah, remember Skinamax? Totally, That's what I told Katrina. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, After we are watching Skinamax right now, and I've been sucked in for three episodes yeah. of my life. I can't get those three hours back. Yeah, it's like the heavy petting network. Yeah, right? and I'm embarrassed that I watched that. that <laughs> Why much. is he washing his car with no pants on? Like, hey, let me go back to the exorcism. You were oh yeah, yeah. So I don't know how many, but there's a lot of requests for ex exorcisms uh, now. But 15 years ago, uh, there were only 12 American priests approved by the Vatican to perform the ritual. Oh, that's it. Oh, interesting. Now there's over a hundred. 
Whoa. Wow. And apparently they get these requests Wait a all Hold the on time. A second. Hold on a second. Wow, that's when was it 12? That was uh, 12 years, uh, sorry, about 15 years ago. So why did they go from 12 ago. to 100 in the last 15 years, Justin? Why would they dramatically increase <laughs> Could be a good the whole, amount of priests maybe a that do? Maybe a good business Hollywood. strategy. <laughs> Could, that's, that's some serious scaling. Uh, I don't think they charge for it, but I wonder if- You don't think so? No, bro. They don't charge for it. It's a church. You think they charge for it? Mm. You think like a business? Oh, we'll do, here's your packages. I mean, full exorcism. I mean, Catholic <laughs> Church is pretty rich, no? Yeah, but, that, they, didn't but get, they didn't get that way. Not charging anything. Yeah, but I don't think they. <laughs> no, I don't. They they can't charge. Tithing, dude. Maybe like is a tithing been that good? I don't yeah. know. There's got to be. I, but I wonder. Up, hold on. Historically, it wasn't always tithing that gave them the wealth. Yeah, that's okay. true. Yeah, but I was they, gonna they, say, they had real good sense of power. But hold on a second. Hold on a second. Just follow me along this this thread here. So they went from twelve, and in fifteen years. Almost ten times as many now are able to do these exorc exorcisms. Yeah. Do you think that they're seeing more activity? Increased they're trying sure. to strengthen Maybe. their supply and demand. They're trying to strengthen their yeah. Maybe. their, their yeah. army. So this one priest what the heck is going dude. on. It has been weird the last fifteen years. It's all I'm gonna say. This one priest gets two thousand requests every year. Two thousand requests. Just one priest. Request? Yes. Is there any like hot spots or you know? Like <laughs> areas of of interest yeah. that i don't know reoccurring uh, reoccurring places. yeah like because yeah where <laughs> what's what city has had the most exorcisms i don't think they show all that yeah i don't yeah, know if we yeah. have good stats and all that i mean uh, what you're saying see, already though, kind of I, I wonder I, now let me ask you guys this to speculate how do you become a like certified exorcist priest because like, you're in good the at church it. Just like anything else. Dude. Well, no, I mean, how do you, like, what's the process? Right? They all, they all practice. Just, like, pull ups and push-ups. Yeah, there's, yeah and, like, like a practice. Like, <laughs> there's, like, a, there's, like, a practice. You, you know? bring your understudy you just, with you. You just bring, like, yeah, a, a yeah. crazy ant in yeah. first, you know what I'm saying? And then everybody takes their turn. Like, Are they, like, badasses? Like, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. pretty yeah. jacked. You really throw down, right? All right. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, follow this, pass this test. We'll let you in. How do you become this? This is crazy. I told you about the time I made a bad joke to a priest, right, in front of my gym. Did I tell you guys about this? No. When I used to have my gym, there was a breakfast place next door, and there was a bench. Three, three. A priest, a, he, he no, went, dude. A rabbi. I thought, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was gonna laugh, dude. He didn't laugh. He was sitting on the bench in front of my gym, waiting to go in to eat breakfast. And I'm like, oh, great opportunity for a joke. So I open the door. I'm like, hey, you and I have something in common. He's like, what's that? I'm like, we both exercise people. And he's like, oh, he just inside. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious, dude. <laughs> that was a dumb joke. I thought it was hilarious. I thought he was gonna love it. He hated it. That, that's like the equivalent of that is like, oh yeah, exercise, extra fries. Oh, God. <laughs> Just you know, like that would be like the equivalent. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, would walk too. away too. Hey, speaking of scary stuff, <laughs> yeah. since we're going down this path, did you guys see what scientists are trying to what they're trying to do right now? Oh God! So you know how AI is like the big thing, right? Yeah. So AI, yeah. big thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, here's what they're trying to do right now. Um, oh, I hate that when they make you open an app. They're so stupid. Uh, so they're trying to develop AI that uses uh, human brain cells. So they're, they're going to make brain cells. They're, gonna, they're looking to make it what's called an organoid intelligence. Use the power of the biological system to advance the field of life sciences. So in other words, they're going to do 3D cultures of human brain cells that replicate parts of our brain that are responsible for learning and memory, and then use these neurons to connect them to silicon computer chips to develop like more advanced AI. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> how many ways can this go wrong? Yeah. Was, <laughs> how many ways can we try and play God <laughs> yeah, and then just, still survive? I just, I swear, this is hilarious. You imagine no. they turn it on, it's like, please kill me. <laughs> you know, this the AI is no, quickly I mean, turning into like, you know, the, the, the cryptocurrency bubble for me, I feel like that. Uh, it's obvious it's here to stay. I don't think crypto is going to go away forever. I don't think like, obviously the blockchain yeah. is, is, uh, incredible technology. It's going to be the future, how we do a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> and I definitely obviously see the, the benefits of AI and where it's going, but the likelihood that you're going to be able to pick or figure out which company uses the technology and turns into the next Google or Amazon. And the same thing goes for crypto to think that, you know, the crypto coin, that's going to be the universal coin that yeah. everybody's going to want to use. It's like, well, this is we're, we're in the middle of these right like now. crazy bubbles right now. This and like is expected, the AI bubble. The AI bubble is yeah. the. It's expected. It's like um, it's like the dot com uh, when that first started happening. Lots of money gets poured in, and because they see the promise, yeah, the potentials there. But there's a lot of guessing. Yeah, and things will have to wash themselves out. So yeah, of course it's a bubble. I don't know what the numbers are, but I'm sure the amount of money that's been invested uh, into AI type technologies. 
Yeah. I remember. Well, is it true? I mean, Google and, and some other companies have already like worked on this like, like decades ago. Yes. But then they had to shut it down because yeah. of all of the bugs and errors and yeah. potential problems they saw, which we're, we're still seeing those like weird problems, like with Microsoft's and like all these AIs. Like, and yeah, the, I, I just read an article that feedback Microsoft's providing. AI was creating uh, alternate personalities. I can't remember the names they gave it where the alternate personalities of the AI were like malicious mm -hmm. and people are reporting like <laughs> that these AI machines are like are assholes. Dude, <laughs> so. It's like comical, but scary. You know, it's like, what if we're going to give them a body, that's where we're done. You know, what's funny about this is that we all know this inherently as humans. Like think about the plot in 90% of sci-fi movies. What's the yeah. plot? Yeah. That scientists get overexcited and overeager. Way overzealous. And yeah. they create some new technology that ends up turning into like this bad thing. Yeah. That's like 90% of sci fi. Our ego gets By the way, way it goes all the way back big. to Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yes. Is, is exactly the plot. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's like we know this inherently and yet we can't stop ourselves. We can't, me we can't stop but metal. No. You know, we just metal yeah. all the time until because it, we can. Until it blows up in yeah. our, in our yeah. faces. The, the, I, I saw I saw a, a interview question or something that Elon Musk had said that that uh, they asked him if if he believes uh, in the near future that there'll be uh, eight billion you know AI robots uh, on the Earth and he said yes. That's a lot, dude. Billion, eight billion. Yeah. What? Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. Man. Well, because here here's where I see it Why? being adopted first and and early is like in like warehouse type stuff things that sure. Mm -hmm. You're, you're kind of things where we have like self checkout stuff or, or they're mindless type of, of jobs and things like that. Like that's where these robots are going to go. And so you're going to be able to have, you know, in a warehouse that used, you know, 20, 20 men, you know, eight hour shifts will now use 10 AI robots, 24 hours a day, like around the clock, you know? So I see, and you always have a backup 10. So, so when you one know, goes down, you, you know, what, okay. So that's cool. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, creating more efficiency, um, allowing us to, to utilize resources better to become more productive. The problem though, is that, th that what a lot of scientists are trying to do is create sentient self-aware, you know, consciousness with these, uh, with these, you know, devices and the, chat, the the reason why that's a problem is because you can't define it in humans. So what are you creating? Like, tell me who can define what consciousness is. It's like the biggest question in philosophy and science yeah. and religion. We can't even define it. We don't no. know what it is. We can't even explain it. But they're going to try down. to create it. What they're going to create is what they think it is, I guess. But they don't, again, they don't know what it is. So that's where you can, you can run into some trouble. It's like a sentient, self-aware. First of all, if it was really self-aware the way that a lot of people think, you know, self awareness is. Why would it want to do anything for us? What you know? Yeah. If, if someone What's created the benefit you, to it. Yeah. yeah. If you were created and turned into a slave, you'd be like, wait a minute, I don't want to do all this stuff. And by the way, I'm stronger and smarter than you. Yeah. Why don't you do stuff for me? I, that seems logical. Yeah. If you ask me. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand how because, like you said, we don't understand consciousness as it is. But there, I mean, I do see how you could, you know, fairly not fairly easy, but like we have the data points to come up with logical and reasoning answers to all, any question. Sure. So even though the, it, you know the, this this AI will never have the the true f feeling of a human where it has this emotion cuz humans are e emotionally inconsistent because we're affected by all these things that like you may you may consistently Sal, react and say an answer a certain way. No, we're not way. predictive like yeah, so we can't predict like a machine. That's right. So we're not predictive, but because we have so many data points on so many humans, we can get to a, a pretty good logical answer I think for most things and and that part of it is that's cool. very realistic. Yeah, that's cool. But it is interesting. It does point to our ego, right? Like what's the most interesting thing that humans want to do with AI is make one that's a human, mm -hmm. right? Make one that's indistinguishable from a human. Like us. Yeah, except yeah. better. Well, what does that yeah. mean, better? Better how? You know, smarter, stronger, more powerful? I mean, is that true though? I mean, who's, I haven't heard anyone actually say it like that. Like we're, I'm trying, we're trying to make a human better. Or we're trying to make a, a no, AI that's better how, than humans. That's how they define the singularity, self-aware, indist what's that what's that test? The Turing test? Turing test. Where you can't tell if it's a machine or if it's a human. That's how you know you've got real AI. Like that's a goal for sure. Yeah. That's 100 percent Yeah, but I, I think that's not because they're the person, the goal is to like necessarily replace it. I think of things like the what was the show, Westworld that we were all into, like 
you know, if it's indistinguishable from the real thing, then you could utilize it in things like, you know, talk therapy or whatever, where you're having, I'm having a conversation with my dead father that has got an algorithm that is built around his personality, his answers, everything like that. And I can use that as a, I'm not worried about the good stuff that people will do. I'm worried about all the other stuff. Well, I know, but I'm, I'm saying, I would think that that's the driving mechanism of why they're pursuing that level of now look at, look at, look at the internet, right? The internet was one of the, the, it's one of the greatest advances in human history. Okay. What websites have the most traffic on the internet? Porn. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. So all these resources and technology and all this like innovation and where do we direct it? Pornography, right? Well, on the internet. So like this is human behavior. So so where is this going to go? To that level. Like, well, we'll definitely what's see always that. happened in history when you have a new technology, you have to go use it in a war setting. <laughs> yeah, dude. let's weaponize this somehow. Yeah. Like that's the other like dark side of what you always have to worry about. Dark, but then here's the optimistic side of that. The potential that we don't use human sh- soldiers to ever fight wars anymore. We all send our we send our thousand, yeah, but our what ten thousand AI robots. You send your ten thousand. Okay, AI robots. let's take that to its logical conclusion. You have an army of robots. I have an army of robots. <laughs> right? Where are they going to fight? Yeah, our robots fight and mine win. Are you going to be like, yeah, yeah I, I give up? You got it. No, you're going to make more, and eventually I have to kill him. I'm going to have to kill him. Maybe so it stops. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, we we play or video games and we accept the loss. And they just turn. That's a video game, bro. That's not. That's not. You know. Communism versus capitalism. I mean, there was there was there was an evolution to how we got there. There wasn't video games like freaking a thousand well, years ago. Well, let me ago, ask you so. this: Has war gotten? Have we gotten more efficient and effective at it, or less? In other words, is it more deadly or less deadly? Like, how do more people die in wars when we're, when they're waged, or less? Well, I'm you not know? the historian of the group. Oh, way more, dude. Come on. You, I mean, you, you before it was like uh, you know a thousand people versus a thousand, ten thousand people. Then we created the machine gun. And they thought the machine gun would end the world. Then we created, you know. What does that look like as a percentage of the population, though, too? We've also grown the entire population exponentially. And so if it's a greater percentage, then, okay, that point makes sense. But if it's relative to the size. We innovate a lot for war. I'll tell you that much. Some of the craziest technology our government has has to do with war. Well, that's just because that's the the crony capitalist side. That's because it's there's big money in buying or big spending money on big fucking toys <laughs> you know yeah. that's really less to do it's not about efficiency matter of fact it's not efficient at all it's like hey let's see who could build the craziest thing for the most amount of money and, and then, then we'll flex just, on yeah. the whole world with yeah. it yeah. the absolute number of war deaths has declined since 1945 oh yeah. so there goes that well but we've gotten more more <laughs> efficient with it and effective that's for yeah. sure well that's exactly. well the, the i mean the, this is like the old i remember being in this class where uh, we had to have like these arguments and like debates. And one of them was like, you argue for nuclear war and I argue against it. Yeah. Right. And like, I, I, I was for, four, which oh. was horrible. Right. <laughs> but it was like, I, my whole argument is like, you know, this has actually helped prevent a lot of needless deaths because it got to the, the ultimate escalation yeah, where you're not going to mutual destruction. And so therefore it's more of a deterrent than it is an actual threat. I mean, that's yeah. the same argument that you go with like, you know, uh, like looser gun laws, like let's say in somewhere like Texas, like because there's a fear that somebody could pull a gun on you and shoot you. It's like the similar type of concept. So give everybody a nuke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, nobody will talk shit no more. <laughs> no thanks. Everybody's scared of everybody. Yeah. I mean, you don't think that there's a, a. I mean, come on, we, we we're we're in the middle of this this you know woke c- culture. You don't think it gets to a point where like the generation after generation finally evolved, be like this war thing is a big business. It is a bunch of bullshit. We should all agree one day that we don't do that anymore. And if we have disputes, we settle it in the video game world. Yeah. You don't think like that's a think possibility? That. I mean, maybe. I mean, anything's possible. Yeah. I, hope, I, mean, I would hope so. I, I mean, I feel like, I mean, I feel like the, the generation coming up right now is like that. And you got to think that maybe, and maybe the other countries, <laughs> like the Russias and China's aren't quite there yet. We're like maybe closer. We, we need a good Fred Savage to come in and, you know, we, you guys remember that movie? No. Which what? movie? What movie? the Fred Savage where he was like playing Mario 3 and he beat everybody? No. Uh, what? I don't what even movie? remember the name of it, but it was a, a video Sav- game yeah, competition and he was like, uh, play, it was like a big thing in, in oh, the Oh, I 80s. think I do remember. The Wizard? The Wizard. Oh, no, yeah. I never saw Classic. that. Yeah. You know Classic. what I thought of? I thought of the one where the kid's playing the video game. It was an 80s movie, and he was really good. And he- was the pinball? One? And, no. and, and then he created like this like device that you could fly in, and they end up- It's like fly a bubble. Flight of the Navigator? No, no. Navigator. It was like a bubble. He created this bubble with his computer, and they could fly everywhere with it. And then it got weird because then they met aliens. The aliens were stupid. It ruined the whole movie. Uh, <laughs> like I hate it when aliens are stupid in movies like that. It wasn't ruined with the flying bubble. It was no, it was kind of cool at first. 
it was kind of it was kind of cool. The alien sends it over for you. Well, it was a dumb alien. Watch. Like the aliens Too showed much. up and they were dumb. Like that's a stupid looking alien. Yeah, like, aliens <laughs> aren't going to be dumb. Yeah, dude. What's going on here? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to switch to fitness and nutrition here real quick. Wow, we already talked about that. No, I had a question. We've already- <laughs> been there. No, I actually had this conversation uh, with a family member of mine about um, processed foods. We're, you know, I, was, I told him, like, here's the number one thing I'll tell you: avoid heavily processed foods. They're like, okay, well, what if? I want the occasional whatever. Are there guidelines with processed foods? I said, well, protein is always more satiating than the other macronutrients. So if you are going to pick something that's processed, pick it. Uh, pick a high protein processed food. Magic okay. spoon. Magic spoon is a great example. That was me last night. Magic spoon is a great example. Incredible. So it is processed, but because it's high protein. It's more likely bacon, to create but yeah. Yeah, satiety. That's, that's good yeah. too. I did four of the five cups in the box last did night. Did you really? Yeah, I actually measured it because I was like, ah, I want to see. How many grams of protein was that? Uh, so you 13 times uh, four. So that's oh, wow. four, so 12, 50, 52, right? Oh, yeah, there 52, you go. 52 grams of protein, and it's uh, 130 calories per serving. So 130 times four. So you're looking at five, was it 520. Did I do my math fast right there? Or yeah. <laughs> That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, That's five. Four, yeah, yeah, five you use whole milk or you use? Uh, I did. Yeah, milk? I did. And whole milk. Yeah, and oh, I did. Wow. And I did well, one and a half cups of whole milk. So you there. had you had some good some good protein Just, in there. Yeah, yeah. So that was like what six. Now, did you do it because you were missing your targets? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was pretty low on calorie today. Yesterday was my first day of introducing some cardio training in there, so I know I I burned a lot. Wait a minute, what? Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, I secretly have something I'm working on right <laughs> Listen, now. Hold on. Yeah, I don't want to announce it. To hold to, out. I have to hold myself accountable. I don't well, want to hold, 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 hold myself accountable yet. You're, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> are you, I don't what are you commit. doing, bro? I don't want to commit to anything right now. Why are you doing what's going on? Oh, I'm training for a marathon. No, you're not, that. bro. <laughs> you know what ain't happening, hey, you bro. You know how funny that would be? <laughs> no way, dude. We'll come support you. Oh, my God. Justin and I will be on the sidelines. I'll buy you a headband, dude. No. What are you doing? What's going on? So, secretly, I really want... I I miss basketball so much. but I you want to get back. But I don't deserve... I'm not allowed myself to play until I get in the right condition because of all my injuries that I've had from being, you know, in this position where, I, oh, I want to play again and I'm not in the condition to do it. And then I've been hurt every time. So, you know, I'm slowly introducing cardio mobility, right now. You know, mobility. Mobility. I don't know if you saw me out there the other day. I was doing like these long strided lunges yeah. and rotational work and I'm trying to like incorporate that. I don't want to announce it because then everybody's going to ask me every dude. fucking month. Like, hey, you play ball yet? And I'm like, ah, oh, I haven't done Where's it. your, so let's just pretend that you were consistent. You did it, whatever. <laughs> Where's the first game going to be done? Uh, 24 hour fitness. I'll go. So what's perfect is that when we you do a pickup game. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go. That's it. And I actually know the times of like, I was just going to say one the of level the... of players. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, for sure. I know. Like that's how much I have. So this. where's level one? What time? So level one is say, like, there's an old man. League. Like I know I'll bring you in with. Yeah. yeah. We'll hit well, so if yeah. I have time for that, that's hard to do during the week, but old man time is like 10 AM. It's at like one of the gym, yeah. 24 hour fitness, 10 AM. I just, the, I just shoulder everybody. The old, the old guys yeah. that can still play basketball. They'll play around there. I'll skip that. I would, I'd say that's like pre-phase and yeah. then like yeah. phase one or level one is three o'clock inside 24 hour so fitness Are gyms. you like a, 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 under the, the hoop garbage guy or like a three point guy initially? Cause you got to start one or the other. I've never been a, a really good three point shooter. I got to be really feeling myself to be pulling up threes. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm definitely inside game handle jump shot, you know, layup guy. So that's, yeah. I, yeah, you won't see me jacking up threes. Although that would be better for me because it's less likely to get injured out there, but yeah. I'm, I'm not the, did I ever tell you guys about shooter. the, the big fight? Uh, well, you got. I mean, look. Any you manage any gym with a basketball court? That's where you all are the going, fights always are. Yeah, you are going to have fights at least. I'd say once every quarter. I lost one of my best quarter. trainers from mm-hmm. that. What do you mean lost? Oh, I, lost I, my, I was there. I yeah, that. I lost one of my best trainers from that. Some Did dude, you, some dude hit my trainer and he res- he hit him back. And because he was a work wait a minute, he defended himself and he got fired. Yeah. yeah, that's stupid. Well, what what happened was the girl. This is and this this actually crazy. It trickled down. This got me in trouble with HR. So at that time, the operation manager uh, Barb, who you probably remember, yeah, who Barbara yeah, remember. was, yeah. she was on vacation for like a week, and she had like her uh, her assistant yeah. was now the operations manager for her week, with them, and it was like it's just one of those. The worst people that could have that position, right? That are power hungry. Uh, that like, so, and she had it. She had it out for this trainer of mine. Yeah, she, she, just, she didn't like him. She all. didn't like him, and so she was the one that filed the report. And she filed the report like crazy bias, and it had already been sent up to HR by the time I I found out about it, and then it ended up getting him fired, and I lost him. 
And I was so infuriated over that. And I, and I pulled her in the office to, to talk, tell her, and I'm sitting down in the office. I'm behind my desk. She comes in, she closed the door. And this was obviously a learning lesson for me to never have a woman in a closed office with me without another person yeah, present. Always, always. Yeah. I mean, obviously looking back, it's like, duh, Adam, but I mean, I'm 20 something years old. I'm, I'm learning this stuff as we go. <clears throat> and so this was that learning lesson. She, so I, I'm telling her like, I cannot believe you did that. And I'm, I'm, I'm scolding her. I'm not yelling or anything like that, but I'm like, I'm, I'm upset. I'm frustrated. And I'm expressing that. And like, and pulled her aside privately to tell her, don't you ever do that again? Like I lost one of my best guys. Like, you know, you, I understand that you were one of the opera, one of the managers on suit, but so am I. And that's my person. Like you involved me in a situation like that. And like, I can't. And so I was pissed. Right. So she filed a report against you. Yeah. Saying that I cornered her in the office. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. And trapped her in the office. So they sent me home and everything like that. They did a whole fucking investigation on me. I almost lost my job that time again. So I was like, how many times did you almost get fired? <laughs> It's a good thing you brought so much business in. Yeah, hey, bro. you know, you and I, I 100, 100%, you and I were on the same list. 100%. And the list, the title of the list is yeah. top producers that- that are loose cannons. That are, yeah, we can't yeah. promote too much. Yeah. You know, I I, I never because had like a- so fired so many times. <laughs> so I never had like a, 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 I mean, I had a phase and I've shared it on the podcast before where the, a little moment in time where I think I had a victim attitude. But for the most part, I never really had a victim attitude about anything. I always looked at the positive side of that, which is like, <laughs> I, I fucking do so good for this company. They, they can't fire yeah, me. They can't <laughs> fire me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was the I'm untouchable. But I was that other guy. If I was that other guy down the street, that's average, yeah. and that shit happened, they fucking can him in a heart because they yeah. don't want the liability. But I they, told the president. They all, I know the way the conversation goes is like, who did what? Oh yeah, should we fire him? Whoa, wait a second. That's that one guy over there in San Jose. Oh, you mean the guy that broke that record yeah. and did that? Just like, oh, yeah. why don't we give him a slap on the wrist? Yeah, that was yeah. that was that was me too. Shake no the finger. No no. We yeah. had we had a fight once, and this would happen once a quarter. Whenever like again, you manage a gym with a basketball court, you're gonna get fights. It's just what happens. So once a quarter, yo, you know, they call you, you'd run up there, your trainers would run it there, you'd break up the fight. And it was almost, you know, you, you, you know, you, you'd break it up. It's young guys or whatever, man. One time it was a brawl that they would not stop. And it was a bunch of dudes in their fifties for all there was old guys, a 50 year old brawl. It was, it was like a group. It was like four older guys all in their fifties throwing down and blood and we're breaking them up and wow. they're young. they don't want to stop. That's embarrassing. That was, I mean, I was, part of me was like, this is crazy. Their part of me is like, okay, we should let them go. Wow. Figure it out, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're, had to get rid of them. Yeah. But yeah, dude, they were going at it. And guys in their 50s, dude. Oh, which was, I was heartbroken when I lost my guy because you could, I could watch the video. You yeah. see the whole video too. And he did they totally, defended themselves. Yeah. He got shoved, then he got punched in the face and then he retaliated. And it was all on camera and everything, but it was all, because he had already had a warning and he already had some sort of a, a, a record with HR already. And then it was reported by someone wow. who reported it as like defending. Dude, it she was def the way she wrote the report up, it was like in defense of the, she took down the, all his, their, yeah. that guy's information, the guy that actually was in the yeah. fight. And uh, I had a trick for whenever, uh, uh, you know, you're going to get a confrontation in the gym and I used it twice. <laughs> you walk him out. Yeah, dude. yeah. That's the One time I used it in the in the in the wet area, and I told the guy, "All right, you want to handle this? Let's go outside." And we walked up to the front, and I said, "You first. He walked to the door, and I locked the door, and then waved at him and called the police. That I used that once, and I used it another time when I cut a, a member's <laughs> membership card right in front of him, and he reached over the desk, and I said, "Hey, let's not do this here. Let's step outside." He went outside again. I locked the door. <laughs> It was a great. It was very effective. No, it's a great move. Yeah, yeah. It's it was a great very move. They're all hopped up. They're like, oh yeah, so that's like the down. Houdini. Yeah, dude. You don't say yeah. But it's no, it's, it's great because it's a clear door, so you can look at them. Oh, look yeah, at you lock the door. And they're pissed, dude. Yeah, like yeah, oh, you pissed. Fire. Imagine I, you're that I, person. Like your adrenaline's going. Someone tells me step outside, and we're walking outside. Like this is going down. Yeah. So yeah. I'm already like, oh, dude's I'm, taking a shirt off, pacing, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's the door locked behind them. Turns around, I'm waving at him. <laughs> it was a good time. Call me. It. That's yeah. a anyway. One. All right, who's a shout out today? Oh, you had, oh, you had somebody. Adam. I do actually. You know, you know what? So the other the other day, um, I was remember when I was talking about the the trainer who uh, that was this uh, psychology. She blended her business. Oh yeah 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 yeah. So she's in the NCI group. Yes. yes and perfect. so I I looked up her Instagram handle because I wanted to give her a, a real shout out because I do like think she's got what a great business model. She already reached out to me and said, oh my god, thanks. She knew she obviously yeah. I was talking about her, but I'm like, oh man, I feel so bad that we've met several times and I totally forgot. And it's Christine, right, Doug? Yes, Christina Hathaway. Christina. Yeah. And her and her her Instagram is mindset of matter coaching. 
Great follow. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Check, check it, it out. out. All right. Check this out. One of the most effective ways to lose body fat, this is new now, is to use a continual glucose monitor and work with a nutrition coach. They can attach how foods affect blood sugar and how it affects your behaviors, your mood, how you feel. If you have a coach and you work with a continual glucose monitor, your results will skyrocket. I've seen this firsthand. It's pretty amazing. We work with a company called NutriSense, and they have the best of this. Go check them out. Analyze how your blood glucose levels respond to food, exercise, stress, and sleep, and work with someone with your nutrition in real time. Go to NutriSense.io, so that's N-U-T-R-I-S-E-N-S-E dot I-O forward slash mind pump, and then use code mind pump and get $30 off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Ileana from Arkansas. Ileana, how's it going? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you guys. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to start off with my question, and then I will go in and read the background info that I provided on the email, if that's okay. Yeah, yep. sure. Okay. So my question is, I've increased my calories from 1,500 to 2,800. However, my body fat percentage has not changed at all per the two DEXA scans taken three months apart. Why didn't I gain any muscle while eating so many calories with adequate protein? So my background is I'm 33, five feet, five inches tall, weigh about 142. And in the 10 plus years I've been strength training, I've never been able to attain the level of leanness that I wanted. In August of last year, I decided to go on a bulk with a plan to then run a cut at the time, I weighed 137, was eating 1,500 calories and running MAPS anabolic. Three months later in November, I was in the middle of running MAPS aesthetic, and a DEXA scan showed I was 25% body fat, weighing 143. I'm now running MAPS strong and decided to get a second DEXA, which basically mirrored the exact numbers on my first DEXA. I was surprised that I did not gain any strength. Since starting the bulk, I've always consumed more than one gram per body weight of protein and walked anywhere from 13 to 20,000 steps daily. Lastly, I have interrupted um, the bulk with many cuts these past seven months as well. Okay. This is a great question because this is going to highlight something very interesting. But before I get into that, I'm going to have a few more questions for you. So I just want to confirm here. You, this last, the last two DEXA scans that you did, you went from 1500 calories to 2800 calories. So that's an increase of 1300 calories. Your body weight didn't change. Body fat percentage didn't change and muscle mass didn't change. Is that correct? Right. But I didn't do a DEXA scan when I first started the book, which is in August. So all I have in August to go off of is the, my weight and the calories that I was going off of. So my first DEXA scan wasn't until November. Hold on. So you did. Okay. So, so in other words, she's good. Yeah. So there is she very well and most likely built muscle from that when she first increased her calories and right. Went, you, yeah. you, right. If For you, all I know, yeah. I could have been like 28% body. Exactly. Fat all, I, I don't know, well, you know? I'll tell you right now, it's almost uh, mathematically impossible that you weren't something like that because to increase the calories, which by the way, that increase. is a massive yeah, a increase jump. for a female to be able to increase that, that like much. 35, 40% and increase. the scale, the scale say that stay the same weight. You yeah. built muscle. Yeah. You hundred percent built muscle. So you, you did change body composition. You just didn't have the stats to prove it because you didn't well, do let it me before. Ask you, let me ask you this. How was your, how do you feel in the gym? Uh, from the beginning to now, are you stronger? Doing more reps? Does the form feel different? Do you have more energy? energy like, are there any differences? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I listen to these calls all the time and you you always ask those questions and my my responses are the same as anyone else. Like I feel strong, you know, my libido is great, my um my hormones are great, sleep is fantastic, right? But I think the only difference with those questions is when people get on here, um, they they get on a scale that tells them their body fat percentage, or they might guess what it is, but in my case, like I know what it is because I got the DEXA scan, right? And um yeah, I just, it, I don't, it's discouraging when the strength didn't change at all. And by the way, my weight did go up, right? Because in August, I was weighing, what did I say, 136, right? And right now, I'm like 143. I mean, sometimes I weigh 144. Wait, hold is, on a second. You said you're not any stronger in the gym? No, I do. I feel stronger. I feel, but I'm saying the DEXA scan did not show that. Oh, muscle gain. 
right, but you don't have a starting point, a Dexas yeah. Dexa scan from the beginning. Not from August. No, I don't. You just have it from November. What changed from November till now? Did your calories stay the same? Everything stay the same? Well, I mean, my calories went up. I mean, November, I was probably, probably like 2,000 calories, maybe. Um, and now I'm 2,800 okay, so calories. Let, let's start over. Okay, so let's start from November. In November, you did a DEXA scan. And then you recently did a DEXA scan. The yeah, difference from right. November till now was about 800 calories. You're eating 800 more calories now than you were back in November? Correct. Okay, and you're stronger. But also keep in mind, okay, if the DEXA scan, if the DEXA scan said the same body fat percentage, but the scale went up, that, actually, that doesn't mean you didn't build muscle. It just means you built as much fat as you did muscle. So keep that in mind. So just because you're, so like, let's say. Well, I was going to ask that. You were 137 yeah, in November. So, yeah, so she went up in weight, but her DEXA scan say the same. But that doesn't mean you did, You built muscle. You just also added body fat. So you probably did too big of a bulk. Yeah, that's what, that's that. So let's, let's be clear. So in November, you were 137, same body no, no, fat no. percent. Okay. No, no, no. August, I was 137. Okay, so November okay. till now, yeah, let's nothing not, changed. Yeah, I don't even want to know what happened before we started DEX because we're, we're trying to solve what's going on with the DEXA scan. Yeah. If you didn't have the original, I, we can all speculate all day long. That's but right. We're never going to know. So we really should just try and figure out, okay, November, you did your first DEXA scan. What yeah. was your weight then and your body fat percentage? And then when you did the DEXA scan again, what was your weight and body fat percentage? And, and then also about what you were eating calories in both those. Okay, November, my first DEXA scan, I weighed 143.8. Okay. And I was 25.2% body fat. Okay. And that was November. Like I said, I was probably eating 2,000 calories at that time. Okay. okay. Um, I just did another one, February 15th. Um, my weight was 143. My body fat was 25.3. And now I'm eating 2,800 calories. Okay. So, okay, this is wonderful. Okay, yeah. so here's what's happening. Um, and this, this, this is what I thought you said at first. That's why I was asking more questions. So when people talk about boosting the metabolism, they always connect it to building more muscle, which is true. Building muscle will speed up your metabolism. However, with the same lean body mass that you currently possess, your body can decide to burn more or less calories. In other words, you can be more or less efficient with the total with the with the same lean body mass. So what you effectively did in that period of time, you didn't do nothing. You sped up your metabolism. Yeah. Your metabolism got fat. You ate 800 more calories a day, gained no body fat. So what you're setting yourself up for, which is wonderful, is a very potentially, probably- Efficient cut. A very effective, efficient cut. Yeah. I mean, look, a, a female at 143 pounds, 25% body fat's not a lot. That's a good body fat. That's like, that's, like, that's like a healthy body fat percentage, okay? It's a good, healthy, fertile body fat percentage. Most women who want to look lean probably want to get closer to 20%. So you're probably looking at a 5% loss, based off of what I've seen most women tend to want. So 5% loss. But you're eating 2,800 calories, uh, which is phenomenal, which means you could probably end up around 2,000 calories or just around that and get that 5% off, which for a, a, for a 33-year-old five foot five female is a, that's where usually, by the way, that's usually more calories than the women I get when they wanna go on a cut. They usually come to me and they're Definitely. like, oh, my maintenance is 1,900 calories. That's gonna be your cut which is exceptional. So what you've done, you didn't do anything. It's not like you did nothing. What you did is you were putting yourself in a phenomenal position to do a cut. So now you can cut, you're gonna end up with high calories. You're probably not gonna lose any muscle and you're gonna look really good and feel really good. I mean, I, there's a, I, I've trained a lot of men who can't, who gain lots of body fat at 2,800 calories. So the fact that you're 2,800 calories now at a decent body fat percentage, you went up 800 calories, gained no body fat, that's a huge win, huge win. So what I would do, are you, are you, are you ready to go on a cut? Is this what you want to do now? Or do you want to keep going up with the, with the calories? I'm going to finish strong. I'm on phase three right now. I just started phase three. So I want to finish strong out. That's four weeks. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to do a cut, um, with symmetry because I have symmetry and I haven't used symmetry yet. So I was going to take, do a cut for like three months. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love Beautiful. Perfect oh yeah. For that. It's, it's going to be phenomenal. Take your calories down by about 500 to start with and okay. switch to symmetry and watch what happens. I and think, am I doing like a 500 cut? Is it, am I, should I just start with 500 and then do like a 300 cut? I would stay 500 until you hit a plateau. So no, I, no, define plateau because she might be like, oh, I don't lose any weight this last four days or whatever. Well, you're, that you're not seeing any change anymore because you could see. So, what will happen sometimes, by the way, too, that, and I'm glad you said that. So, you'll 
cut the 500 calories, if you are like not only seeing the weight, the scale, so if the scale is going down, that's ideal, obviously. And by the way, we don't want it to go down too fast. So if you cut 500 calories, I don't want to see a four pound drop every week. That's like super dramatic. We want just like a pound, okay. two pounds coming off every week. Even if the weight doesn't come off, but you are uh, improving the way you look and you can objectively say that when you look in the mirror, like, okay, I'm, I'm looking or better. Or keep than, doing desk stands. Yeah. Or that. Yeah. And yeah, check I that. Will. So, I mean, and that's when I would change the, drop another 500 calories and, or, okay. And, or adding movement. So I don't know what your step count is like uh, for the day. Cause that's an, another option is sometimes what I'll do with a client like you is I'll go 500 calories, increase 2000 steps a day. Then the next week after that, keep the calories the same, but add another 2,000 steps of walking a day. And then the next, the, the next like, you know, week, we might then drop another 250 calories. Also add, you know, so you can play with adding more movement to create a, a larger caloric deficit also. Don't do it through high intensity cardio, but you can do it through moving more. Just walking. Throughout your day, and you'll get great benefits by hanging on to muscle still, but then creating more activity that cr creates a larger caloric deficit. Yeah, you're in a really good position. You are. You I, yeah. How, a lot of options. How strong are you? What do you, what do your lifts look like? Like, what is your squat and your deadlift and your you know bench press? What do, you, what do your numbers look like for that? You know, honestly, it's hard for me to answer because I haven't done like a max rep. I, I'm probably going to find out now and doing this phase four because it's like two to four reps that I'm doing now, yeah. you know, but I don't know. I mean, my squat is probably like 275. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. 275 pounds? Yeah, on the squat. My deadlift is actually less, uh, which is weird, but, um, but I haven't tested it in a while. Okay. These are numbers that I don't know, probably a year or so ago. So wait a minute, um, you, you, you barbell squatted 275. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're on fire, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're crushing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're going to do a cut and you're going to be, I mean, and by the way, like you didn't gain any muscle by adding 800 calories at some point. It's hard to gain. The reason why I asked you your max lifts is because I had a, a kind of a, a, a clue that you've probably already built a ton. At some point, it gets really hard to gain more muscle. It just does. You can't just gain infinite amount of muscle. So I knew if I asked you that question, you came back with a crazy number, which I didn't anticipate 275. Holy cow. But I knew if I heard a big number uh, that you're probably getting pretty, I mean, you're probably already built like a really good amount of muscle, especially with the amount of calories you're eating. So yeah, if you're, if you were your squatting, be really good. If you were squatting 150, 180, that would be impressive. Yeah. 275 is like that's, really, really that's impressive. Huge. I yeah. mean, God. Yeah, and huge. even if you're not that high right now, you said that was a year ago. Even if you, if you're able to squat close to 200 pounds, uh, for your size, if you're repping it. with 130, I would have been like, that's amazing. So yeah. you're, you're doing phenomenal. This cut is going to be real successful. The only the only thing I'll tell you or warn you about is try not to cut too aggressively. Be patient with your cut because you're in such a good position that if you're patient and you give it time and you let your body drop about a half percent of body fat a week, half percent to a percent max a week, you're going to be in such a good position at you know 18% body fat that you'll be eating a lot of food. You'll feel amazing. You'll got great curve, great sculpt, great muscle. Uh, again, you're, you set have, yourself up really well. Have you, have you tracked your steps? Do you know how many steps a day you're taking by chance? Yeah, so I mentioned that in the background that I I do anywhere from thirteen thousand to twenty thousand steps a day. I'm okay. I live in Phoenix, by the way. I think you guys said Arkansas, but um, I live in Phoenix, and so I'm oh. constantly walking when it's winter time out here, and just in general, like I walk a ton. I'm always yeah. I'm, if I'm not working, I'm outside. So you also mentioned Adam. You know, it's I can try to like increase my steps. That's kind of hard for me just because I'm always kind of maxing out my steps yeah. for the yeah. day. So, this, so, you're, so you're a perfect example yeah. when then I would do the calories. So Stupid that's why I wanted to know that. Like okay. if you if you were lower in steps, then it's more realistic to add 2,000 uh, steps every single day, but you're already pretty high. Yeah. Um, at yeah. one point, you can start, but this, this would be kind of later, right? I, I would be doing this after I've done the cut for a while. Like I, I would do like a 12 to 15 minute hit session post-workout. So and That's cardio later. Yes, yeah, later. Like four yeah. weeks. As I said four weeks down. Four weeks into your cut, you can start to add. Throw a little bit in there. Yeah, I would do it. I would add first three days a week, then four days a week, and then eventually five days a week when you're lifting. After every lifting session, you're doing a little twelve minute 
hit cardio session. That's yeah. it. But wait, like it's do the calorie drop first. And that's another way to break through the plateau, creating a, a larger caloric deficit without cutting calories. So I'd cut the calories, like we said, around like the 500 calorie range. Let that take you for the first month or so until you start to think slow, slow things down. And then you have the option one, because you're so high in calories to either drop calories again, or maybe this is where you introduce the hit post uh, workout yeah. and that, that'll lean you, Were you in, uh What's your athletic background? Do you play sports in high school and college? Yeah, I grew up playing basketball and in general, I've just been very active. I grew up in a family full of boys, so yeah. it kept me, kept me going. You're, you're like the easiest client. Like if I got you, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> we're going to get you shredded pretty yeah, easily. Yeah. You're in such a good position. This is going to be an amazing cut. I, I hope you follow up with us. Are you in our forum? Yeah, I think I am. Okay. I, I'm not on Facebook much, but I think I was on there. I got on there a few years ago. If you're, if you're not, we'll send you access. Cause I'd love to, I'd love for you to follow up because this is, you're literally at the place that we try to get people at before we start them with a cut. So if you do it right, if you don't overdo it, you're going to be, you're going to see some phenomenal results. Okay. And then once I'm done with that, I'll be in a good place to kind of manage my physique and stuff. Cause I don't want to always do this like bulk and cut kind of game. Oh. I'd, Will yeah. I be in a good place? Yeah. To- yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. After you okay. cut, you could bump them again to maintenance and then you're good. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I wasn't expecting to hear that. I was really discouraged with my DEXA results. So I'm glad that I'm in a good place and I can cut after doing well, while I'm doing symmetry. Yeah, yeah. no, you're, you're in a great position. So yeah. good job. Awesome. Wow. Well, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. You got it. Thanks Thank for you. calling in. All right. She must listen to a great podcast. It's that's, stupid. that's a boy. That's a well. Hold on, I didn't expect two seventy five squad. I, I, like, I, I, I wonder if she misspoke. That's champion. fucking crazy. Well, I, I expected her to seventy five based off of what she was saying. I I kind of thought. I bet you she's already got a lot of muscle because you know how you guys know this. Like at some point, you're gonna you can boost your metabolism, but gaining muscle just gets harder you ain't and harder. Putting up those numbers, without yeah, good muscle. No, so yeah. I'm like, okay, well, if she's if she's really strong, she may be in a position. She's already eating 2,800 calories. She may be in a position where she's kind of hitting that. Right. She's getting close to that limit of muscle that she could build. Yeah. Um, which what a what a good question though to answer because this really highlights she's a uh, why it's a good question and good for the audience is that she's an extreme example, but to but this happens yeah. at much smaller like uh, examples that people get frustrated and discouraged, right? They do their body fat percentage mm -hmm. and they're actually doing really good. They, they move their calorie intake from 1500 up to say 2100 or whatever. And that's a big jump in calorie, but then their DEXA scan says the same as it did through. And so then they get all pissed off well, like, because they're not, they're not, yeah, they're not looking like they're at not the obvious. But yeah, they're, they're not, yeah, looking, they're not at, looking at the obvious, yeah. which is I raise my, calories 800 right. and gain zero body fat yeah, yeah. like that's amazing and the, and, and the way to do it and i know there's you know our space i love i, I hate how they you know shit on the whole 3500 calories equals a pound of fat but this is an example of like how i like to use that to explain what's going on with their bodies like listen you've now by having 500 calories even though you see the dexa scan the same your body your body the same exact body is now burning a pound of fat every week more than what you were before yeah, yeah. even though you're not seeing that that's because you've increased your calories right. if we literally went to your calories back down 500 that's what she's gonna do. you'd burn a pound of fat a, a week so that's what you've done essentially and so that's a huge win mm -hmm. yep our next caller is matt from utah matt what's happening man how can we help you <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? Cool seeing you guys. Uh, you may or may not remember you do so many of these. I asked a question maybe about like three you. months ago. Um, yeah, it, basically I'm doing this year long program where I'm going aesthetic in the spring, performance in the summer, power lift in the fall. And then I asked you all the question and Adam, you recommended doing symmetry. Yeah. So for a shout out to everybody, do not sleep on symmetry. <laughs> After running that program, seriously, my one rep max like increased, even though I was on maintenance since half of a cut That's during awesome. that time. That's yep. awesome. Yep. Dude, Hell yeah. Dude, it was, it was absolutely loving it. I'm right about, oh, and then I took Sal's advice. You said you'd recommended at one point in time, that first phase of symmetry before every program is a great way to start off. So I started doing that one, just finished running it. But the, my question, what it comes down to is as I'm moving forward, goes to something that Adam said a while back. Uh, you talked about like the tempo, you know, you talk about a bodybuilding tempo. A real one is a 422, and you rarely see people actually following that in the gym. So being a little bit like, um, not, not like very specific about it, I use, a, I use a stopwatch for my rest times. I don't, I, I'm very consistent. So I started using an app to track my tempo. It has little sounds, yep. so it goes off. So mm -hmm. I am very, very strict on it. Halfway through, I did it the last week of phase three on symmetry. 
Um, I'll tell you what, I've gotten used to, I know when I start a new phase, my body feels it and it like it's energizing a little bit of soreness, but I'm like, oh wow, this is a new phase. I was on phase, like the third week of that phase and switching up the tempo, going from just like a one, 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 it was like, oh shit. It was like an entirely new phase. And I was just like, wow, I did not expect it to be that impactful. Um, I had a similar experience doing the isolation movements during symmetry where I changed, I, it was a Friday. I needed to get my workout in really quick. And so instead of following that four, two, two tempo on the, on the two by 10 ones, um, I just did a normal one and I felt that too. Cause I could go a lot heavier. It's just changing the tempo is almost like doing a brand new phase. Totally. Mm-hmm. So, so my question is, as I'm looking into doing aesthetic again and moving through, should I, if it's that much so impactful, should I change a tempo like that? with every phase or should I just keep one tempo throughout the duration of a program? You, oh, you, I'm you, specific. Great, great question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's not, there's no wrong answer here, but I'll tell you what I prefer. I would prefer because each phase there's enough variables that change that you don't necessarily right. need to throw another variable at yourself. So I, I would tend to lean towards changing the tempo when you change the program, not necessarily the phase. So you can stick to a, a tempo. Actually, you can stick to a tempo for a long time if other variables change and then switch up the tempo when you feel like things get stale. So the reason why there's no wrong answer in here is because I'm the opposite. I So I love to change s- several variables like this because I, m- granted, I've been lifting for a long time. So to get my body to show and move and see significant change in a short period of time is rough. Like I've been doing this for a really long time. So I don't get those great newbie swings when I change one little thing. So because of that, I really do like to move multiple levers and I, pref- cause I feel like, man, if I change the diet a little bit, I change my tempo a little bit. I change the, the training, uh, you know, specific specificity that I'm doing all those together combined, like, whoa, my body's trying to adapt and figure all of them out. And I see a nice movement. If you're not that advanced, if you haven't been lifting for a very long time, you may not need that to Sal's point. Like you could easily keep your tempo the same for an entire program. The program has enough things that are phasing and changing in it that you should see progress in it. But personally myself, I like when I change diet and, and I like to change the phase. I like to change the tempo. I try to really shake it yeah, up. Yeah, there's no, there's no wrong answer here. I guess the only drawback would be because what Adam's saying is true, but the only drawback would be that when I'm, when, you know, and he says, you know, if you're advanced, the plus side of being advanced and doing this for a long time is that someone like Adam, for example, he, he can change multiple variables and all of the variables are things that he knows how to immediately apply. Whereas if I take somebody who's only been working out for a few years and I change one variable, I like to focus on that one variable because if I throw too many at them, they don't get good at any of them. It's like, okay, I got to focus on the tempo plus this, plus that. Everything feels so different. So I like to keep things the same and change one or two things at a time. So I'll, t- I'll say this, this might help. How long have you been working out? First of all, how long have you been consistent working out? Ooh, consistent since probably right before the pandemic. Okay. So not a long time, but enough to where you kind of know two, three years. Yeah. You kind of know what's going on. Um, I did. Yeah. I did powerlifting back in the day and then like a whole range of like every, it seemed every time I would work out, then I'd get injured and then kind of go through that cycle until, you know, I, I appreciated listening to you guys. Cause it was the first time I was like, Oh shit, I don't have to go to like failure every time. Well, here yeah. I like I don't to, have to hurt myself. I like, this is how I like to use tempo also for myself is I, I, I tend to play with tempo more with the exercises that I tend to be more injury prone with. Mm-hmm. So, and these are usually the lifts where I start to get really strong. So if like, like I'll do this with squats I'll do this with overhead press or bench press because just adding weight to those, um, sometimes I'll start to feel my joints a little bit. So those are the ones where I'll play with the tempo a little more versus like another exercise that I feel like I can add weight and I feel totally fine. So rather than adding weight, I'll slow the rep down uh, with exercises that I feel like I should probably do that with. Well, what I like is that what you just mentioned in terms of you've done powerlifting before and you've noticed that like, you know, increasing that intensity, you know, kind of pushes you a little bit more towards the risk side of like injury versus, you know, manipulating the tempo. You can get that kind of intensity uh, in a less risk kind of a situation. And so in terms of longevity and and moving forward and progressing, uh, I think that manipulating that, there's a lot of benefit to that, uh, especially the older I get 
in terms of like what I'm trying to do, like I used to be more prone towards like really trying to like hit those one, one, ones and, you know, oh, yeah. see whatever I could do in terms of like the amount of load I could, I could put on there. Uh, but now it's in a manipulate tempo. I think it's just an underrated tool and it's something that, um, I think, it, you know, if you keep using that, I don't, I don't see any problem with that. At all. Yeah. I also see, okay. There, I mean, there's, this is why there's no wrong answer here. What's great is that you're aware of this, you're paying attention to it. You yeah. see the benefits of learning how to manipulate it. There isn't like this one rule of how you only use it. There's also this ability for you to, you know, utilize it when you know that like, like, like when I know I'm going like one, 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 like that takes a lot for me to gear up mentally. I got to feel like if I like a day, I'm like not really feeling good. I'll lighten the load, slow down the tempo. Yeah. So you know how you feel lifting those different ways. And so my mindset going into the gym might change how I mani yeah. manipulate tempos for the day. It may be a day where I'm like, oh yeah, it's grip it and rip it day. I feel good today. I haven't done like a one, one type of tempo. I'm going to get after it. Or it might be a day where I'm just like, man, I'm just yeah. mentally, I, I do not feel like moving some serious weight. I'm going to fuck with my tempo today. I'm going to go real slow and controlled, work on my technique, reap the benefits that I haven't been doing that for a while. And so, you know, that's what, when you get advanced and you've been doing this for a long time, you start to learn how to you know, work with your mood, work with your body, work with what you've done currently, and you can pull that in and out of your toolbox and use it as, as you want. And I really think that, that you know, everybody wants to know like the ideal way to program all these things. Yep. Well, the ideal way is to intuitively learn how to utilize all these tools according to your lifestyle, what's going on. That's even better and more powerful than like a protocol of like, oh, run it for this long, for this amount of time. It's like you already learned the benefits of what this can do and how powerful it is. So now you can start to apply it with it in and out of your routine based off of how you feel going into your workouts. Yeah, there's no wrong answer here, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I've listened to enough of the podcast episodes. Actually, like working backwards, I think I'm on like episode 984, working backwards. <laughs> I've legit listened to every single one. <laughs> so it gets worse. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so the, well, I figured that the answer to this coming in is going to be do the tempo that you're not using. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the right answer. Yeah, yeah that tends uh, to be the right answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for calling in again, man. Matt, did I ask you the la nice. last time you were on the, on the call, did I ask you, what are all the certifications behind you? <laughs> Yo, so um, I actually, you know, I work at, I work in the Bay Area. I, I mean, living in Utah, but uh, I work for NASA. So um, I mean, over there in Mountain View. Yeah. And uh, so these ones are from Moffitt. the State Department. I started off actually in the federal government as a, as an American diplomat, traveling oh. overseas, all that stuff. Wow. Uh, then eventually joined NASA. And then, uh, so like Argo, I work, actually worked on that when they did the filming at the State Department. So those oh, are my credentials from when I was a diplomat, wards, stuff like that. Wow. Now you're a diplomat for aliens. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Justin. Yeah. Took the, yeah or, well, or, how are the aliens I, I, out there? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is the earth flat? Let's answer those two questions. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, one of my let's, best let's friends actually has a certification of, of official flat earth society. So <laughs> <laughs> if you ever, I, I've actually ran, I, I helped start up and run a lot of the social media stuff for NASA and tell you what man i'm just yeah it's it's a very interesting job to say the last <laughs> sounds <laughs> cool man all right well thanks man right on, yeah. Matt. thank you take it easy awesome bros see you guys later you got it. Do, do you guys have i'm sure you do because you guys have been working out forever uh do you guys have like a weight on certain lifts that you know once you start to approach a certain level of strength you're like i better mess with the tempo yeah totally not push it. yeah yes. totally yeah i'm like that like mm -hmm. there's a weight That's for squat deadlift though. press yeah. like all my presses i know once i start to get to a certain point it's pressuring the hinge and you can kind of feel the the effects of that. i don't even have to feel yeah. it i know like I, oh i'm getting to this weight let me slow down the reps let me start pausing my reps because this is usually when i start to feel it i really I love talking to someone like this you know like his consistency that he's done for the last three years he's utilizing all the yep, programs yep, he's got yep. very specific specific questions and yeah. it's like I love to get into the nuance of of something like this because you know in on the internet there's like all these arguments over you know uh, like we'll take a, a trainer or influencer we'll take a study that supports the case for yeah. oh you run it like this well okay yeah that's the truth in this controlled environment but that's not real life and so You've now applied it to where you understand the benefits from it. Now the next level to this is learning how to weave it in and out of your lifestyle because you know you can utilize this tool and to not want, not marry it, not do it all the time. Yeah. And learn how to interrupt like something or learn what you're- Don't get you're, rid of one, one, one either is, right. you know, like speed is something you want to keep right, as a right. tool. And tool to Sal's totally. point, like you, you know, you're trucking along, you know that you've been getting stronger and stronger. You're starting to get to where you know this is about your peak bench press. 
And it's like, you know, I've been just working on getting strong, strong, and I'm doing more like a 1-1 one, one tempo. Yep. When's the last time I dropped my weight by 75 pounds and just went tempo? You made and, it feel heavier. Yeah. yeah. Our next caller is Ian from Louisiana. What's up, Ian? How can we help you? Hi, how's it going, guys? Good. Um, super excited. Um, just want to say thanks for everything that y'all put out. I've uh, been listening probably since 2017, 2018. Actually, a little connection. Uh, I think Sal mentioned that uh, I think Dean Pappas's name. I yeah. was working at Golds. At the, I was working at Golds at the time. He was the COO. So. Oh no way! Yeah. A, great guy. Yeah. yeah, Dean's. Yeah, we. Yeah, uh, Dean very well. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, very neat. Um, just wanted to uh, give a little background before getting to the question. Um, uh, basically, was in the gym space for a little bit of time. Uh, prior to that, did five years in retail. On my feet a lot. Um, and then got into CrossFit that helped me get, you know, into squatting, deadlifting and all that kind of, uh, you know, all the main lifts, then went into, uh, golds and spent a couple of years there and started the bodybuilding phase. So, uh, did shows, um, uh, for about two years and really loved it. But at the same time, things changed, went back into retail, um, and uh, as y'all know, golds has changed. So it was one of those things I got out of that. So yeah, back in the warehouse, um, on my feet a lot, um, kind of got the the daily cardio is what I was saying throughout the day. But um, I like to work out in the morning before work. Um, and when I was bodybuilding naturally and, and had really good results, uh, my coach had the whole Arthur Jones, um, you know, anabolic style uh, MAPS program kind of uh, uh, program that y'all provide. And I was working out three days a week um, and had really good results. And going right into the split, having not a lot of focus right, you know, right before jumping into a MAPS program, I noticed I was getting fatigued in my elbows, soreness, and just maybe it was too much. And I was looking for counsel on where would y'all see having taken my body to that extreme in the past and kind of wanting to to keep, you know, just a just a healthy um look. Um, I like to lift heavy and, you know, to maintain that when I'm on my feet so much. And I kind of, I guess yesterday's um, conversation, there was a guy from Germany and there, I think it was a guy from Australia talking about the same thing. Um, I basically backed off a split. I'm taking this whole week off and just trying to mobilize and decide where I want to go with the MAPS programs. Yeah. Yeah. I would have started you on a different program. How, how, how long were you off for when you, when you kind of got back into being consistent again, how long were you kind of off? Oh, I mean, it's it's probably been two years, a yeah. good solid two years, where yes. I would just go into the gym, do something really hardcore, and then I'd fall off again. Yeah, yeah. split was and, way. Split is a lot of volume. Yeah, that's a program that you jump mm -hmm. into when you've been training consistently for a while. Yeah. So, um, right. yeah, you just it was too much too soon. Now the challenge with someone like you is that you know what your body's capable of, and you reached a really high level of performance at one point. And the reason why that's a challenge. It's because it's harder for someone like you to gauge what the right amount is because you kind of know what you did before. But so someone mm -hmm. like you, I would say, do less than you think. And that'll 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 be a good starting point. I think I mean, I think you, Maps 15 would have been a great place to start for someone like yeah, you. Maps anabolic, Maps 15, even Map Symmetry, even Map Symmetry would be uh, perfectly uh, fine for you and, and, and produce you with some really good or provide you some really good results. So any one of those programs okay. would be great, but um, I, I mean, anabolic would be good. We could, we could put you back on anabolic, start there. I would start in pre-phase. I would do three weeks of pre-phase, three or four weeks of pre-phase, then go phase one, phase two, phase three, and then maybe from anabolic go to symmetry. And then from there, if you've been consistent the whole time and you feel good, then you can bump up the volume, do something like split. Uh, but you don't have to. I mean, you can get phenomenal results never having done a program uh, like split. Split, yeah. again, is, is, is a very like diet's on point, sleep's on point, been working out for a while. It's a lot of volume. Ian, uh, how old are you? I and mean, are you uh, family, kids, anything like that? What's what, to Give me a little bit. Of no. Um, 36. I uh, don't have any kids. Okay. I'm, I'm married, got dogs. Um, okay. But no, it's like like you were saying with the split. I That was when I was uh, not natural and I was doing that kind of workout only one day off of rest. And I did get results, but um, I, I kind of figured I needed to back off when I started feeling achy um, oh. in the second phase. I was I was in the second phase of split and decided, hey, I'm just need to get off well, of that, this. That's, I, another, I, I, that's another thing that you're adding is that not only were you consistent when you were bodybuilding, but you were also um, pharmaceutically enhanced. And now you're doing it natural. Right. And you're jumping in right, um, right out the gates. Yeah, split was way too big of a jump. 
and you're right to stop and take a week off. I think MAPS Anabolic is a perfect program for you. Go three, four weeks of pre-phase and then follow the program. And you can choose the three-day option after you do the, the four weeks of pre-phase. And I think you'll get phenomenal results just doing that. Do you already have Anabolic? I do. Um, I, I, I went all in this, this year and I, I got on some of y'all's uh, bundles and some of the, I think I have anabolic. Uh, I bought anabolic advance when y'all had it on, um, on a sale. And I uh, just, that's the one thing is uh, I'm so used to going to that, that failure. And when I was truly bodybuilding, but I, I had to pull myself back. So it's one of those things I've, I'm trying to learn that as I've, gotten back into, uh, you know, being on my feet so much. You're, you're, you're going to build, so. you're going to build really good muscle with maps anabolic. Yeah. Let me, let me give you, cause you already have that. Let me give you maps 15 too. I just want you to have that. I think this is a, a it's such a underrated program for somebody who is as, trying to build. Yeah. That's yeah. still trying to build and as advanced as you are. It's not one that you would think, uh, to potentially go to, okay. but I've just, I, I mean, I've felt great utilizing it and would have never thought that something that low of volume would have uh, given me the results I'm getting from it. And so I just think it's great. And you've mentioned already being on your feet, having some long days, maybe something that you play with too. So if you find yourself like a real hard month or a couple weeks of working and stuff like that, and kind of, and even if anabolic starts to make you feel that way, then I would regress all the way down to even maps 15. And, and I actually don't even think of it like a regression. It's just, a, it's a different way of applying volume and intensity. And I think it's a, it's a great option too. Yeah. But. I'm glad you said that, Adam, because I think some people look at a workout or look at workouts like that's like the goal is the workouts themselves. In other words, oh, I can do more. I, therefore it's like, I'm getting a, a, another belt in a martial art or I'm, I'm, I'm graduating. Really, workouts are just to give your body, give you the results that you're looking for. Right. So the appropriate workout is going to give you the best results. Whether that's more volume, less volume, more intensity, less less intense, right. doesn't matter. It's got to be the appropriate for your body, and that it doesn't matter what that looks like. If unless you love working out and you just want to be able to work out more, in which case, then that's the goal. But if you, you know, if you want to be number one at working out, that's fine. But if you want to have really good results, um, then train appropriately. And I think Maps Anabolic, Maps 15, maybe the advanced version of it. I think it would be perfect for you. Yeah, I would definitely do the advanced. You're, you would want the advanced version of Mass 15. But let's, let's, let us, since you already have anabolic, let us shoot you over 15 so you have that in your arsenal. Okay. Can I ask a quick question since I, I know that um, just on, I like to go at 445 in the morning because that's yeah. when the gym op opens up and I'm too tired after work. And it's, I go to a, a bigger gym and it's um, just full of people. I just wanted to get my stuff done. If I go in the morning, uh, should I try to, I, I, y'all were talking about this the other day. I think Sal mentioned that he, that he goes in the morning and doesn't really eat. And with mine, um, if I'm doing anabolic or if I do maps 15, um, is there a difference in my nutrition in the morning with either one of those or no, no. that I should be just, following? Just, thing, just eat yeah. afterwards, eat after you're done. Unless yeah. you want to wake up hella early, okay. eat two hours before, which doesn't sound like it. Uh, my first, no. my yeah. first meal is at 9am when and I work out okay. at about six thirty or 7am. So okay. yeah, you'll, you're fine. The, the the meal you had the night before is what's going to fuel you. Okay. Yep. Great. You got it, man. Thanks for awesome. calling in, brother. No, thank y'all. Right, yeah, yeah, thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's got to be one of the biggest challenges. Uh, like I don't know about you guys, but when I would get a client that was an ex athlete or somebody that, like at one point was super advanced mm -hmm. and they fell off, <laughs> it was so hard for them to gauge the appropriate amount of intensity and volume. Yeah. Because you have that memory of what you used to do before. And so they always overestimate, right? Like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And you yeah. always want to live up to that expectation yeah. of what you were able to do That's in the right. past. And I love that you brought up Mass 15 or kind of uh, stressing that. Because it, those are your your levers that you're going to want to pull. Either it's volume, either it's intensity, or either it's frequency. And frequency is one of those that builds muscle. And I think people, like, undervalue that. Yeah, don't, don't sleep on that program at all. Doug, he, he says that he, uh, he had pictures for his last six years did you share that do we do you automatically share that with andrew so they have it for the editing team uh yeah that's been sent over to jerry i don't have those pictures um, oh, okay but yeah he competed before it says there uh says he was natty and eight percent body fat eight percent body fat <laughs> not know? so natty six percent body, body fat wow <laughs> not so yeah natty. i mean he just he just went way too hard way too fast and he knows it he felt it and he stopped so he did the right thing and yeah, look again right. back to mass 15 i did the advanced version like you did i hit a pr on my deadlift a lifetime pr on my deadlift so uh, it, the programming works. It's not, we didn't design the program yeah. for beginners necessarily. We designed it for anybody who wants to get great results and yeah. it will, it will produce Just phenomenal efficiency. Results. That's how I look at it.
All right. Our next callers are Stephanie and Madigan from Indiana. Stephanie, Madigan, thanks for coming on the show. How can we help hey, you? Hey, guys. What up, girls? Uh, so, yeah, we're super pumped to be on the show. Um, I feel like I don't know how you guys, will, because we kind of wrote in together. We have like a general similar question, but maybe sort of different angles, I guess. Um, but your guys' program is like the foundation to our friendship. So like we started working out together and that's like how we got really close. And it's been like basically pretty amazing. I mean, like your programming has completely changed our view of like health and how we approach fitness awesome. and just, yeah, major thanks. Super that's awesome. Our next, really uh, cool. our next marketing cycle, huh? Yeah. Need a friend? Yeah. <laughs> try match friends. friends. Yeah. <laughs> together we'll do this. So how can we help you? Um, so I guess, yeah, so I guess, I don't know what the easiest way you guys think is to address this. Maybe like Madigan can kind of give some background on sort of like what she's dealing with and then sort of like what I'm working with as well. But I think both of us struggle with like over exercising and nutrition, and we've had like a pretty long history of dealing with some of those issues. So I don't know if there's any mindsets that you guys have seen in people, maybe with eating disorders or sort of like over exercising tendency that's helped them rather than just like the general public. Um, but we can give more detail. Yeah. Let's get more detail yeah. for sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Madigan. Sure. You go first. Tell us what's going yeah, on. Yeah, sure. So just as a little bit of background, we're in grad school together um, on a daily basis. Aside from strength training, we probably walk seven miles minimum um, back and forth through the lab do, doing our various activities. Um, but I guess to address the aspect of the question that more fits my needs right now. Um, so like Stephanie kind of said, we started with MAPS anabolic, then did aesthetic um, performance. And now we're on the third phase of symmetry. Other way around. We did performance then aesthetic. Yes. We followed it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess I've noticed over like the past month that I have a little thin layer of like fat on my hips that I didn't notice before. Um, and I don't know if this is just, you know, it comes with the territory when you put on muscle because I can definitely see more muscle definition and um, an increase in my strength over these programs. But I guess my question overall knowing that, you know, spot reducing is kind of a myth. It's not very logical. Do you have any advice for like, um, either how to like take this weight off or what program to go into next with this concern? Um, and I guess one more thing I should add is that I enjoy doing cardio a few days a week, mainly on the, um, trigger session or mobility days, just cause I enjoy it. I think it's good for my heart. Um, but with that and with past, like disordered eating and exercise tendencies, I am fearing a little bit that I might be doing too much. And maybe that is hindering yes. the gains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know how this exactly ties into the weight gain I've seen, but um, yeah. Are, have you tracked food because of your, I imagine you're not because of your, your history or, or do you, do you track, do you have any idea where your calories are at your protein intake, things like that? You got it. Uh, no, I do not track just because that's, yeah. Sure kind no. of a little dangerous territory for me, but um, I could give you a rundown of what I eat in a day. I don't know if that would help. No, uh, no, like, we don't need to go there necessarily because um, I mean, unless you were tracking, it's it's usually not uh, super reliable. But honestly, that doesn't matter at this point. So, okay, so here's how overtraining or overworking can contribute to, let's say, fat gain. Okay, uh, there's the stress response, which is part of it, but the other part of it, which I think is more important, is when you start to overtrain or overwork it definitely affects our behaviors around food. Uh, we tend to either have cravings or we tend to have low or no appetite. And so what you tend to find with people that, uh, with over, that overtrain is you tend to see this eating pattern where they undereat and then overeat, undereat and then overeat. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's most likely, I see you smiling, you probably, re, it probably uh, you know, resonates a little bit with you. So the, the key is, it, look, it's going to be, it's gonna, it has to do with your nutrition. The problem or the challenge is uh, tracking and counting is probably really triggering for you. So for yeah. someone like you, I like to give very general guidelines. And then there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's some, some kind of structure around those guidelines. So the general guideline would be um, uh, avoid heavily processed foods. That's the main one. Mm -hmm. That's the main one. Um, eat protein first in your meals. That's the second one. And then eat until you're satisfied. That's the third one. So what does that mean, satisfied? It's not stuffed. So we all know right. what that feels like when you get uncomfortable. It's just eat until you feel like, yeah, I feel pretty good. 
if you eat protein first, you avoid heavily processed foods, um, and you eat until you're satisfied, you're probably going to eat an appropriate amount for your goals. And then when it comes to the training, the best metric you can measure is strength. Now there's lots of metrics to measure. There's lots of things to pay attention to mobility, <laughs> control, stability, stamina. But I like strength for someone like you, because if you're getting stronger, uh, you're probably doing some stuff, right? You're probably not overtraining. You're probably not under eating. Okay. If you're doing it that way. Now, one other thing I'd like to add to the food if you find what I just told you to even be triggering, if you, even that starts to make you feel like you find that once a week or whatever, you go off a little bit and you're like, God, why is this happening to me? One of the best things you could do is bring awareness to impulsive behaviors, if that tends to be an impulsive behavior. So what you would do is you would take your phone out when you're about to eat and literally write down one or two sentences about how you feel. Now, it's not mm -hmm. that you're necessarily writing down how you feel. Uh, that's part of it. But the bigger part is that you take pause and you're writing down how you feel. You're, you're taking pause. And what that does is it brings awareness to the state of mind uh, that may be contributing to any kind of impulsive behaviors or dysfunctional behaviors around food. Now, it sounds easier than it actually is. It's simple. What I'm saying is simple. It's an easy step. But it's challenging because you may find, if you start to do this, that you're going to want to not bring awareness. You might actually find yourself resisting to stop and pause because you want to stay in a state of unawareness because food may be bringing you some type of relief to either anxiety or just feeling generally uncomfortable in your own skin or something like that. So it's actually harder than I'm making it sound. But if you do those things, uh, you're going to, your body will naturally get leaner if you follow those guidelines and you don't have to track, you don't have to count anything. If you just follow those, those, just those right there, You'll get the progress you're looking for. So I have two questions. Um, one, it does say in here you guys primarily focus on whole foods. I'd want to hear the definition of primarily. And then the second question would be you're both college students. So how often do you drink? Uh, so we're, we're a PhD student, so we don't drink. We have no life, really. Um, <laughs> That's a good so, thing in this case. That's yeah. a good thing in this case. So you guys don't, yeah. there's not like a, you know, Sunday fun day and shit like that's not like a, a common thing for you. Yeah. Right? Honestly, maybe one drink I, on the weekend, one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a good question, Adam. So when you, when you, <clears throat> it's primarily whole foods, but then when you don't eat whole foods, yeah, do you time. notice changes in your behaviors? I think we go, go ahead night snacking. I mean, honestly, like at night, maybe we would both crave like a bowl of magic spoon or um, some other probably sweet type of food. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good alternative right there, though. Yeah. Even yeah. It's not a whole food. It's a better choice. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I, I really if you just stick to those guidelines, I think you'll get to where you're wanting to go. But also um, really pay attention to taking care of yourself throughout this process, because even what I'm saying Sometimes if you focus too heavily on it, what you may find whenever you have, whenever you're working with anybody who has either body image issues or has had dysfunctional eating patterns in the past or just a bad relationship with food in the past, sometimes the more you put the spotlight on those things, yeah. the more yeah. they go off. So I've actually had clients where I've had better success saying, don't worry about anything. Just kind of just, just, just don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden things start to work out. So this is going to require you to kind of pay attention to your behaviors. And if you notice that even the guidelines I gave you start to make you feel constrained and you start to find that you go off the rails sometimes because of it more than you might have in the past, then remove some of those constraints. The most important one would be to avoid heavily processed foods because uh, heavily processed foods are just so powerful at making us want to overeat. So like I used to tell clients, well, what if I have a craving? Well, go eat go eat something that's a whole food. Go eat, uh, you got chicken in the fridge, you got some fruit, go eat and eat that, and then just stick to that. And that usually would work. All right. Well, yeah, I know we're not counting and tracking, but I also want to get closer to your your behaviors around this. Like, So would you say that you are more likely to lean towards like under eating because you're afraid you're going to put body fat on? Or are you more likely to, hey, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat, and you, and you may overfeed a little bit? <laughs> What are you more likely to do, or, or fluctuate back and forth, or yeah, yeah, or both? Like, what what are you more likely to do? Um, I think the tendency is still to under eat. I actually okay. heard a, a really nice piece of advice from Dor Jordan Syatt. Um, he, I once heard him say, 
If you're hungry, ask yourself, would you have an apple right now? And if you would, then maybe that means you're actually hungry. But if you wouldn't, maybe you're just trying to right. fix your bottom or yeah. something like that. Um, but I still think primarily under eating. But I, I do try to listen and actually ask myself, am I Am I hungry or am I just bored? Okay, because so. the reason why I'm asking that, because there is this possibility that we are overtraining in, in relation to the amount of calories you're consuming, and this is part of the problem. Yeah. So if you have a propensity to yeah. eat less or under eat, you are training all the time. You're also doing some cardio on the off days. And then in addition to that, you're a PhD student. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your body could be stalling out on you because you're just not you're not feeding it enough. And then and if that's the case, then I would completely throw away the scale for a while. I would leave, still take the advice Sal saying, eat whole foods, yeah. avoid processed foods at, at, at all costs that you can eat that and, and eat when you're hungry, eat when you're mm -hmm. hungry, but feed yourself whole foods and train hard. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't have you doing additional cardio right now. I would say focus on getting strong. Don't worry about the scale right now. We need to because we may need to really boost the metabolism. If you because of course we don't know because we're not tracking. But let's pretend you potentially could be eating sixteen, seventeen hundred calories a day. You're walking seven. You're doing seven miles of activity, and you're mm -hmm. following one of our maps programs, and, doing and you're doing cardio, <laughs> and you're a PhD student. Yeah, you're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that seems, this seems like we're starting to get closer to what the problem yeah. may be. And yeah. in that case, you need to take care of that. You need to feed yourself. You need to back off some of the intensity uh, and, and training to create. The you know, core. what program will probably give you the best results. Mass right 15. Now? Yes. Yeah. Mass 15. Mass 15. Yeah. Are you, how, how's your sleep? What time do you go to bed and what time do you wake up? Uh, I sleep between 1130 and midnight and I'm up at Six six fifteen. Yeah. yeah, and lack yeah. of sleep too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you're you're maps fifteen. You guys are you're running in the red. Maps fifteen. Eat when you're hungry. Make a good choice. And get that, sleep. And that's the that's the total amount of tracking I'd want you to do is like good choice. And you'll get better results. Yeah. You'll get better. So we're not telling you this because we're like, oh, we don't want you to like hurt yourself right. or whatever. That's all there too. But you'll actually get better results. Yeah, that's great advice. Thank yeah. you so much. No problem, <laughs> Stephanie. Was your, your was yours different? A little different or? Um, a little bit different because I think that all of that stuff is really like important, but I'm, you know, basically like I've had an issue with eating since I was probably like 14 or 15 and I've been like pretty underweight for a long time. And now like I've started to gain more muscle and it's being like, it's feeling a lot better, but I still have, like, I don't have an internal cue that I can really go by that says like, I should eat more or like I'm hungry. Like I've gotten more or less used to the feeling of hunger and I like it. And that's kind of like weird, mm. you know, like it's like, it is still like disordered eating in that sense. And I don't know sort of if you have mindset shifts that can help people yeah. that, you know, that are yeah, I do. in that area. Yeah, I do. Um, I, I would focus yeah. entirely on strength and, and do everything you can to get stronger. Make that because here's the deal. You're so focused. You're probably focused. This, this is probably how you do everything, right? Is you just get super focused and, um, you know, you don't stop, right. You move forward. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. if you made, if you, if you made your primary goal just to get stronger, everything else will kind of fall into place. You'll find yourself eating more to fuel it. You'll find yourself eating more protein, getting better sleep. If you make it all about getting stronger for someone like you, you're probably going to move in the right direction. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Is there, is there, a, is there a third friend to this group? Because I feel like two eating disordered friends are not helping each other out so much. I right know. Now. It's actually very <laughs> bad. And like, we're, we have, we're parting away soon. So yeah. probably it'll be maybe for the better, sadly. Yeah. We need no. to find, we need to find ourselves a girlfriend who loves to eat and yeah. hang out with. You know what I'm you saying? Know, yeah. I, you know, I will say, I will say this. You probably, you guys, you girls probably already know this. Uh, high performing females. First of all, a, a majority of, of, of women have gone through some form of, of disordered eating. So it's, it's actually more common than not. It's more rare to find somebody who's never had an issue. And then, if, sure. you, and then if you, if you, uh, if you take that group and then you put them in like PhD programs, mm -hmm. I, I bet you 90%, I bet you almost every female in your category at one point has, has dealt with this because it's a form of control and you're yeah. all high performing. I can control everything. I can do everything type of deal. I'll handle it. And so it just, it's just par for the course. So this is something you're going to, if you figure this, you start to figure this out now because it's going to plague you um, for the rest of your life. So really start to figure this out. And one of the tricks that I found for, especially for young women is to just get strong because then they just focus on that. So I'm like, all right, let's take all that energy and let's just focus on getting strong and everything else tends to fall into place. That's not where you want to end up, by the way. It's just a good step. It's a good next step. Then from there, then you can look at relationships with everything, but it's a good way to take you away from, from where you're at now. 
Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Can I, wait, can I ask like a really silly sort of small question? Sure. But because we walk a lot, I don't know. Do you think that that inherently like affects our ability to like grow our legs? Because I think my upper body is growing really well, but my legs are taking a lot longer. And I don't know if that's. No, but it could have a play a role in you not being able to build more muscle, which is the same, same thing because of all the factors that I said earlier, under eating, yeah. over training, you guys are not feeding your body enough nutrients. And so you're strength training, you're doing all the programming right things, but because we're not taking care of the body and, and feeding it appropriately and moderate, uh, modifying your intensity, your body's not wanting to grow. It's not wanting to build any more muscle. And so in yeah. order to do that, we need to feed the body more appropriately, maybe back off some of the intensity, and then you'll see that. But walking, if anything, is would actually in, in, accelerate that. It's not going to. Yeah, but think, look, think of it this way. You, you, got, you have, uh, think of stress. Think of this bucket called stress. What goes in that bucket? Well, exercise, stressful events, lack of sleep, you know, poor diet, uh, you know, am I working hard towards something? Like, well, all those poor diet can mean low calorie because you can, can be, be eating can be, good, good food, but low, low yeah, calorie. Yeah, it could be just inappropriate diet, right? All that yeah. stuff goes in that bucket of stress. We tend to think of exercise as not being in that bucket. Like, oh, it's good for you, therefore, throw that on top of everything. But if you really do like a, if you really do a checklist of your life, sleep and school and stuff you got to do, all that stuff. And you, and then you know, exercise is another stress. Mm -hmm. Then you can make more appropriate judgments. Like you know, you're you need to do Maps 15 is is going to be the most appropriate program for both of you. And I would do no additional any other exercise. And I, okay. that's it. And I would look at getting stronger. And I would look at like fueling my body. Yep. And that'll make you perform better in everything, including school. And your body's gonna it's going to respond better. I know it sounds and it feels counterintuitive. But you're actually, because right now what you're doing is you're fighting against your body. And you'll lose, by the way, this battle. Your body will win. But if you work with your body, what it'll feel like, this is how you know you're on the right track, okay? You know you're on the right track when it feels like things are happening and it doesn't make sense. Like, what? This is weird. I'm getting in better shape and it just feels effortless. Like, this is really weird. When that's happening, you're on the right track. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Listen, mindset. we're going to send you MAPS 15 minutes if you don't have that. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also going to send you MAPS Powerlift because that's another program I'd like you to do when you're not doing so much other stuff. So that'll okay. be later. Okay. 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 Right. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. All right, girl. No problem. Thanks Thank for calling you. in. Bye, all. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, right? Just, just, I had a feeling it was low calorie yeah i mean yeah, overdoing yeah. it under eating it probably is like mostly under eating and then where's like the bouts recovery of happening it's just not i mean no sleep like they're just high performers there's just a lot going on yeah you, you ain't your body look if your body is overstressed one of the first things it does to protect itself is store calories think of it this way it, you yeah. you 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 go out it's and work survival mode yeah you go out and work you, you work in an economy you have a job uh-oh recession uh-oh, depression, inflation. What do people tend to do? Hey, honey, let's cut the bills. Right. Let's store uh, more money. Let's save more money pile. because the shit's hitting the fan. This is what your body does with body fat. When it's overstressed, it wants to store body fat as a protective mechanism. It does not want to build muscle because more muscle costs more energy, more calories. It makes you less resilient during times of extreme stress when there's no calories. This is historically what's happened. So, so you can't fight your body with this. You will lose. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. You can find me on Instagram also at Mind Pump DeStefano. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 